Stay alive. Yay, there we go. Man, that, so every once in a while that takes so dang long. There we go. Hello. Testing, testing. Happy Monday. Uh, happy Labor Day. Support the Labor Day. And most importantly, happy my half birthday. Yes. I <laughs> realized that when I was making the thumbnail. I'm like, nine slash four. Oh, cool. My half birthday. So we're making it a thing now. Also, thank you, Haley, for donating before the stream started. Thank you for the $9 donation. Happy half birthday. Here's $9 for you on 9-4. Thank you. I'm, I thank. I'm half grateful. So thank. Uh, um, full disclosure, because I'm already feeling the sniffles come back. I am loaded up on my allergy medicine and DayQuil. I took a test and it's negative. So it's not the that. But I am a little allergy congested nasally today, um, so I'm 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 we're gonna do our best to keep up the voices. If we get a little tired, we're gonna respect that. Um, <laughs> but I'm 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 super hydrated. I've got my water. We're powering through. I'm being very brave. So everyone, please admire me on my half birthday for how brave I am. I also really 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 want to know. How Phoenix Wright Ace Attorney ends. I know that there's an extra added case that wasn't in the original game or something, but you know what I mean. Um, oh, man. It's just... Thank you. I'm seeing a lot of take care of yourself. Yes, I am. I've been resting. I'm not going to push myself. If I'm still not feeling good tomorrow, I'll update the main channel with a little, hey, you might just have to wait until the next Adventure Time video because I need to lay down. Um, but... uh. So yeah, if I sound a little funny or if we give up on voices, that would be why. But I'm I'm popped up on 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 medicines. Um, I've been getting sleep and drinking fluids. Um, but I just wanted to prefix that in case we give up on the voices. Um, smash that like, gamers! Uh, obliterate that like. Leave a comment of support. Speaking of that extra case in this game if you want more phoenix right ace attorney in the future i have the whole trilogy so we can come back to this after spooky season is done pending me feeling better by thursday we'll be starting uh the scary games on thursday with um inscription leading into liza p and from there i don't know um i'm trying to figure out horror games with the channel members consider becoming one by hitting the join button um or just donating to support more Phoenix Wright streams or more content from here and the main channel. Um, if you don't want to donate or become a member, don't worry. You're helping out by hanging out. Just make sure you're clicking those buttons, liking the posts on social media, sharing links, hyping me up. Um, shout out and a big thank you again to um, Owie, who did um, Phoenix Wright fan art of me on Tumblr. Um, if you tag me in things, I share them. So tag me if you want me to share them. Um, and yeah, that was really sweet. It's on my tumbly. Um, oh man, I think we've we've introduced and warned everyone long enough. Click those things or go to the thirdbuild.com, pick up some merch or donate there. Um, yeah, I'm trying to. So we're we're about to start. <laughs> it's so confusing. The second trial on day three. Um, we talked to an old man and his parrot very briefly and we are defending our boyfriend Edgeworth um, who's been accused of a murder that he claims he didn't commit and I believe him and until we get through this I officially ship Edgeworth and Justice I am an Edgeworth and Justice shipper I thought about saying freedom but that felt inappropriate and then I felt like calling it free Edgeworth, but I felt like that was also inappropriate. Too soon, too real. So that's what we're just going with. I know the second one's called Justice for All, but right now it's only for Edgeworth. Oh, man. But yeah, we're about to start the next trial. Um, it got a little confusing with the investigation because like, we had like a dog and a metal detector. It's something else, but we, we figured it out. Um, oh, and Lotta Heart 
who in this in this universe <laughs> is from is from <laughs> the New York area, um, exaggerated what she witnessed to get to be part of a murder trial because she thought that would be exciting. Um, so, uh, what was I saying? So I think that I think that's about where we are right now. <clears throat> oh, and this might be related to the DL6 incident. The incident from 15 years ago that took the life of Miles' father. So, I have to pay respect to Edgeworth's uh, dad. Can I make game suggestions here? I You can, but it's not gonna... I'm not, I, don't, I can't guarantee I'm gonna remember. Um... Ugh. Oh, my shoulders. All right. Um, cause I don't know, like when it's especially in the members community tab and everything and that stuff, it's really easy for me to like keep track of all that. Um, there, cause yeah, I don't have my I don't have my notebook. I'm not writing anything down. I'm playing games. So if you drop a suggestion here, feel free. But that's not gonna. <laughs> I can't guarantee it's gonna stick in my brain. If you happen to bring up a game I I too have been looking at. I can acknowledge it at that degree, but I'm, I'm not going to, especially video games. There's so damn many. And then sometimes I'm like, I'll wait for this to go on sale. And then I forget. And then it goes away. It's fine. <laughs> um, but anyway, I think we've stalled and waited for everyone to get settled with their snacks long enough. Uh, can we get a let's go in chat? Let's go gamers. Smash that like. Subscribe if you haven't. Ring the bell. Check the settings. Set them to all. I just got yet another comment about how I, someone's favorite YouTuber, is playing Phoenix Wright, their favorite game, and they somehow missed it. Destroy all those buttons, ring the bell, turn the notifications to all, donate, become a member, leave comments, engage with my shit on social media. You have, you have to click so I can stay in your algorithms and it's so frustrating and I don't get how it works. I hate the internet, but I love you, YouTube. Let's go. <clears throat> December 27th, 10 a.m. District Court. Oh, yeah, I forgot how weird Von Karma is. <laughs> In the little, like, the Playmobil zoom out shot. Ahem. <clears throat> Court is now in session for the trial of Mr. Miles Edgeworth. The defense is ready, Your Honor. I'm also really glad I did this because this is going to help my voice out a lot today. Or if you just don't speak, that's fine too. Very well. Apparently, the prosecution is also ready. Who is the judge here, anyway? Uh, Mr. Von Karma, your opening statement. Ah, oh, man. I could just take a break. Uh, very well. No, no opening statements. So, Jesus. Not so fast, Judge. I was taking a meaningful pause before speaking. Uh, right, of, of course. The prediction. Today's trial will end three minutes from now. I'm a big fan of the third bill, you see, and three is kind of a magic number. Ugh. We're just going to pretend that all the characters were chain smoking between <laughs> the last stream and this one. So they're all a little vocally unwell. Order. Order. Mr. Von Karma, what is the meaning of your statement just now? God damn. Bah! Must you question everything? It will be over in three minutes. We have no time to waste. I didn't even put money in the parking meter. I'm so confident. I'll call my witness now. Right. I call my witness, my decisive witness, to the stand! It's that mysterious boat shop owner. Witness, state your profession! God, that face creeps me out. <laughs> I am... I'm the proprietor of the restaurant The Wet Noodle at Gord Lake. And I, I also read boats. The night of the incident, you were in the 
boat rental shop, correct? Uh, yep, 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 I was. Please, testify. Wait a second. We still haven't heard who this old guy is. Uh, can we get an objection the house? Wait a minute. The witness hasn't stated his name yet. Because I did not ask him, Mr. Wright. Bah! I have predicted this trial will end in three minutes. Stop asking trivial questions to cooperate. Can I just put the controller down for three minutes? Fuck this guy. Yeah, right. The witness will state his name. Uh, well, since your mother calls me daddy, you might as well too. Well, uh, not not really sure. Yep. What what do you mean? My um, memory. Your Honor, the witness does does not remember anything beyond the last several years. Ergo, he cannot recall his own name. Um, oh, mm, he can't recall, you say? Yes, but the incident in question took place three days ago. Oh. He can testify. Very well. Let's hear his testimony then, shall we, witness? Oh, uh, shall we, witness? <coughs> it was the night of the 24th, just after midnight, yep. I was in the re west, er, the rent boats, as usual. Then I heard a bang, yep. When I looked out the window, I saw a boat just floating on the lake. I don't like that I'm staring down the barrel of this anime pistol. And then I heard another bang. Just about then, the boat comes back to shore. And a man walks by my window. He was wearing robes like yours and had a big white beard. <laughs> the judge was the murderer. Hmm, very well. I'd like to begin the cross-examination. Are you gonna, like, cover the cost of me not doing my job? Hello? There is nothing to question in my witness's testimony. Ergo, no need for cross-examination. Besides, there are only ten seconds left before our three minutes are up. Judge, your verdict. No! Uh, yes. Uh, M Mr. Wright? Bro, I'm gonna examine the shit out of this cross. What are you saying? Of course I'll cross-examine the witness. Hmm, very well. You may begin. E excuse me, Mr. Von Karma. I didn't realize it was going to move on its own. I was watching the animation. He looks, uh, stressed. Three minutes just passed. I see. Well, then, let's just take our time. You may cross-examine the witness. Skip to the end of the game. I'll tell you who the murderer was. Uh, it was the night of the 24th, just after midnight. Uh, that would make it the 25th. Just after midnight, you say? Yep, just around in. Are you sure? Pretty sure, yep. When I talked to you yesterday, you were rather vague about the time. I'm surprised you seem so sure about it today. Me. <sighs> I asked him and he remembered. That is how I remind him of what he really is. Isn't that right? You never made it as a wise man. Nor could you cut it as a poor man stealing. <laughs> uh, don't glare at me like that. I, uh, I remembered it clearly. I did. Yep. You see. Continue. I was at the Ibiza rent boats. Then I heard a bang. Window, I saw a boat just floating on the lake. Then I heard another bang. They were banging, as the kids say. It's about that the boat comes back to shore and a man walks by my window. Describe the man. By your window? Yep, by my window. It's a piece of glass that's fixated into walls of buildings you can see through them. Right outside the window of my little shack. And could you see the man's face? Well, the fog was pretty darn thick, but he was right there in front of me. I saw him 
This is a rather important detail. Please add it to your testimony. Tisk, tisk, tisk! I have a bad feeling about this. That man was the defendant. He was saying, I can't believe he's dead. I must go find the comfort of my lover, Phoenix Wright. That's pretty damning evidence. I think we know who it is now. Clay, case closed. Uh, are you sure about that? Uh-oh. Dad? Did certain, Keith. He said, I can't believe he's dead as he was walking by, too. Oh, my God. <laughs> Witness, are you sure that the person you saw was Miles Edgeworth? It was him. Dead Edgeworth, boy! He's dead. So one of us is the murderer. <laughs> this sounds like decisive evidence indeed. I see no room for doubt. On karma. He lured me into cross-examining so he could set me up for a fa Oh shit, should I have just skipped it? Oh no. Tisk, tisk, tisk! Nick, I don't like the way things are going here. Everyone in the courtroom is glaring at us. Well, they're not a jury, so, you know, get bent. Uh, I'm going to raise an objection like it was my own. Your Honor, we proved in yesterday's trial that it could not have been Edgeworth who fired that gun. Mr. Wright, are you referring to the fingerprints from Edgeworth's right hand found on the gun? And the photograph showing a man firing with his left hand? Exactly. If you really loved him like you claim to do, you'd know he's ambidextrous. This is easily explainable. He could have wiped his prints after he fired. You are ignoring the truth of the matter here. Everything in this witness's testimony is true! Hmm. The judge is lost in thought. Well, what should I do? Keep objecting. This is our job. Your Honor. Oh, man. This witness claims that Edgeworth said, I can't believe he's dead, but his word is all we have. If we were telling a lie, Mr. Wright, in a court of law, the evidence tells all. Apparently you have yet to realize even this basic fact. If you say his testimony is a lie, show us your proof. Uh, Nick, do we have evidence? It's no good. There's nothing I can do. Are you sure? To be honest, I don't know what to do anymore. Please. Can you hear me, sis? Please. We need your help. Nick needs you. M Miles needs you. Yu-Gi-Oh! That's what summons the ghost. Tisk, tisk, tisk! Three minutes was perhaps too high an expectation. However, 15 minutes isn't bad. This must be a new record. Enough. The witness may leave the stand. <sighs> Has he been on the ground this whole time? Hello? Uh, this, this court sees no reason to further prolong the trial. Nor is there any need for more time to decide the case against the defendant. This case is extremely clear. I see no room for misinter- What? Did I fail? What? No! Hmm... This court finds the defendant, Mr. Miles Edgeworth. No? Did I fail? The accused will surrender to the court immediately to, to be held pending trial at a higher court within a month from today's date. That is all. This court is adjourned. Did I fail? Oh, there we go. Wait? Who was that just now? Me! Huh? What? Larry! Oh, the boy! Oh, that's right. He also... He made a thing explode or something. Larry! 
What are you doing here? Listen, listen you, you gotta listen to me. I, I was, I was there at the park the night of the murder. I wasn't sure about it until just yesterday, but today I remembered it. Remembered what? The gunshot. I heard it too. Uh, why, why do we keep getting saved after the verdict hits? Like, this is, I, I, it kind of pulls me out. I'm like, well, technically we lost, right? Order. What is the meaning of this? The verdict has been declared. I call for adjournment. One moment, Mr. Von Karma. So you say you heard a gunshot? Yes, I did. A gunshot that night. I was sitting here in the audience, listening to the testimony. Then I realized something he said was different from what I remember. I anyhow, I can't just sit here and let you call Edgy a murderer. It's, it's just not right. I'll testify. Let me testify. Oh, man. I'm so congested. Order. Order. Well, this is the first time something has happened like this in my court, except for the last time when it happened. I'm not quite sure how to proceed. Judge, you've already given your decision. The trial is over. Nick, this is it. Larry's given us one final chance at this. She's right. If only it wasn't Larry. Bro, he's like the best friend you've got. He could make things even worse. Whew. Mr. Edgeworth was just declared guilty, Nick. It doesn't get any worse. You're right. Okay. Your Honor, if there is another witness, it is our duty <laughs> to hear him speak. Right here, right now. No waste of time. Or, oops, that's too hooty. <laughs> yes, I am everything. I am everyone. The verdict cannot be overturned. Hmm. <coughs> Allow me to speak my opinion. In all court proceedings, it is our duty <laughs> to prevent an inaccurate verdict. In order to make sure no mistake has been made, every witness should be heard. What? What is this? I withdraw my previous verdict of guilty. <laughs> I really wanted the text to come back up, but they have to like slowly wipe it away. <laughs> I'm trying. <laughs> <laughs> the confetti guys are coming back in like, oh man, all right, everyone, let's set this back up just in case. <laughs> the crew has to come back. Uh, Mr. Von Karma, I order you to call this new witness to testify. Now. What? The court will adjourn for a five-minute recess. After that, we will hear this new witness. Court is adjourned. Now I must, <laughs> I must make a sacrifice to the Lord of Law to undo my guilty verdict. Ooh, that was too close. Hey, buddy. Sorry to keep you on the edge of your seat like that, Edgeworth. Huh. I've seen worse. Yeah, right, Edgeworth. You're sweating bullets. I, I, I just wonder what I just. Wonder what Larry plans to say in there. Larry was at the lake that night. Yeah. <laughs> He's the murderer. He said he went looking for the steel samurai balloon that flew into the lake. Oh, right. And he and he found the balloon and the air tank that night. Yeah. Hey, Edgeworth. Huh? You say something right? Yeah, buddy, my eyes are up here. Thank you. Yeah, a lot of things. You seem out of it. What's wrong? It... It's nothing. Huh? Um, Mr. Edgeworth, there's something I've been meaning to ask you. What's that? Why are your fingerprints on the murder weapon? Oh. Oh. 
I was the one who fell into the water. When he fell into the lake, I went into a daze. I couldn't understand what had happened. I couldn't think straight. Never have. Never will. Then I saw the pistol lying on the floor of the boat in front of me. I picked it up without thinking. I thought it would look cool with my amazing trench coat. I didn't have a reason. Re Dude, really? Honey, you can't just pick up a gun, especially after someone's been shot. Even I know that. I see. Right. Yeah? This might be our chance. Our chance to kiss. Von Karma has only ever has only ever run perfect trials. Perfect trials? Perfectly prepared witnesses. Perfectly complete evidence. That's the secret to his success. This is the first time he's ever had to deal with something unexpected. He has to let someone he hasn't even talked to testify before the court. And that someone... is Larry. What are you getting at? It's likely his testimony will be full of holes, right? That's right, Nick. No ten-minute trial this time. We'll milk this one for all it's worth. Hey, it, it was fifteen minutes. Fifteen. Everything's on Larry now. This is our last chance to make our mark. History will know who we are. This is our last chance to make it all count. It's now or never. <laughs> yes. Right. Right now I can hardly breathe. I know you can do it. Just know that I believe. And it's Edgeworth and he's wearing a P necklace around his neck. P for Phoenix, right? Instead of T for Troy. If you get it, you're a real one. And if not... I hope one day you learn. Uh, court is bet now, but uh, let let me make these references. It's my half birthday. Like, subscribe, donate, become a member, comment. Court is now back in session. Witness, please testify to the court about everything that you saw on the night of December the twenty fourth, All Hallows Christmas Eve. Right, leave it to me. Please, Larry, don't mess this one up. I hate to admit it, but you're our only hope. Mm. Von Karma didn't even have time to prep his witness. I just hope Edgeworth is right about this being our big break. That night I was out in a boat on the lake. I was looking for something and I, uh, found it. It was my bullet into the <laughs> to the victim's torso so i quietly slipped the boat back in at the rental shop dock then just as i was thinking about going home i heard this bang i looked out over the lake but i didn't see a boat so after i heard that single gunshot i went home pretty sure there's more than one. Oh, excuse me that was an unusually vague testimony, even for this court. In any case, Mr. Wright, you may begin your cross-examination. Uh, yes, Your Honor. What's wrong, Nick? It's Larry. I have no idea what he's going to say if I press him. I'm a little scared. Uh, well, we've come this far. There's no way to go but forward, Nick. I remember that night. I just... Okay, uh, I was out in the bottom of the lake. Looking for something? I'm also scared to press him. Looking for something? Uh, yeah! Mr. Butts, what was it you were looking for? What the witness was searching for is irrelevant! Unless it's my foot up his ass! Most likely he was hunting for this Gordy! That's surprisingly close to the truth in a sense. This is all irrelevant! Let's get it over with! I looked over the lake, but I didn't see a boat. That single gunshot. Yeah. 
So you only heard one bang, correct? Yeah! Huh. Well, Nick? Mm, it was a pretty wishy-washy testimony, wasn't it? I, I guess I should just start working on the contradictions. Sorry. I wish I could be more helpful. I wish I could call my sister. Where did the sound come from? Yeah, well, I wasn't too sure about that. I looked around, you know. Did you look at the lake? Yeah, I looked. I looked at it good. Out over the lake, but I didn't see a boat. Wasn't there a boat on the lake? Order. Order. Well, Mr. Uh, Butts. Whoa, whoa! Everybody just calm down, okay? I mean, it was real foggy that night. Not sure whether there was a boat out there or not. Okay, no problem. That's just the most important part of this case. Damn it! <laughs> oh, this one's so hard. Okay. Looked out over the lake, but I didn't see a boat. Around what time was that? Oh, well, let's see. I figured I, I figured I was out searching for about an hour. Guess it was around 12. Yeah. <coughs> Sorry. You're not sure. Hey, don't give me that face. I'm not some sort of human sundial, okay? People use watches these days, Larry. What's a watch, Grandpa? All I've got is my phone. Like and subscribe. Uh, like. Fuck, am I supposed to be presenting evidence? Is something wrong, Mr. Wright? There were so many things wrong, I don't know where to begin. Ah. Uh, well, okay, first of all, what time was it? Oh, it was after 11 when I went out on the boat. By that time, everyone had got home for the night. So I waited until the coast was cleared, so to speak. And why were you out on a boat at such a late hour? Oh my god. Was it gory? Like, do I need to start presenting evidence that? Like, how is that? Just say it was gory to you, fuck. <laughs> Wasn't there a boat on the lake? Yeah, we did this. Order! Order! Well, Mr. Butts. Whoa, whoa. Everybody just calm down. It was real foggy. I'm not sure whether there's a boat out there or not. Yeah, we did this. Fuck. Okay, it's not one of those get to the end of it things. I wish you could call your sister too. Uh, chat help is... <laughs> Am I supposed to be throwing evidence around? Uh... Oh, maybe it's the lake photo. Shows an empty lake. But that doesn't contradict what he said.
1150 empty lake photo. That wouldn't contradict what he said. This also... Right? Or would I present it here? I'm questioning everything I believe in. Time was it? It was after 11 when I went out in the boat. Right? It's got to be that the the lake was empty, but he's saying he was out there. But... W <sighs> Around what time was that? Uh... Guess it was about 12. Uh... -huh. Where's the button where I go so that no one was out there at the time that Miles was there and we could all just go home? Would it be the map? Nah, you get a pretty good view of everything from there. Oh, here we go. Two gunshots. I didn't know that there was one. Oh. No? Oh, did I do it at the wrong spot? Was I not paying attention? <laughs> there we go. There we go. I did it on the wrong spot. I got too excited. W wait a sec, Larry. Wh what? You only heard one bang? You're sure? That's what I said. But Miss Lot of Hot, uh, Miss Lot of Heart testified yesterday that she heard two bangs, and the old man just now said the same thing. Banging, we call it. <laughs> two, <laughs> two people were out banging on that lake. Uh, they both heard two gunshots that night. Me. Were you even listening? Were you paying attention at all to what they said? Yo, Nick, please! Huh? You know something's been bothering me. I'm a witness, see? I'm like a customer here. So you gotta treat me all nice and stuff, okay? I can testify for hours and hours. Mr. Butts. What? You only heard one gunshot. Are you sure? Um, well, I'll tell you the truth. Not sure. Eh? Not... How could you not be sure? Yeah, well... Uh, yeah. Might have missed the other gunshot. I was, uh, listening to something else. Something else? Yeah, I catch up with uh, my favorite YouTuber, The Third Bill. I like listening to his videos while I'm doing stuff. It's comforting, you know? He's really passionate about the things he talks about. He's handsome. It's his happy birthday. Everyone should be liking, commenting... Donating or becoming a member. Subscribing. My radio, dude, with my headphones. What? Wait, so... 
I thought we were getting at he didn't think of the first bang because it was his fault. Order. Order. Stop the booing. Mr. Butts. Butts. You were listening to the radio with your headphones? Yeah, so what? Is that a crime? I listen to my radio. Everybody listens to the radio. What's the big deal? Lock us all up. Mr. Von Karma. Your opinion. Waste of time. Ugh. Yeah. I do not accept this witness, nor his shoddy testimony. Hmm. Well, Mr. Wright, sh should he continue? Please continue. I got nothing else if he stops talking. Your Honor, please, please allow the witness to continue his testimony. Meh. Nothing is more pitiful than a lawyer who doesn't know what he's lost. Very well, Mr. Butts. Please, give your testimony, and be sure to include details like your... Radio. 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 Right! Leave it to me! I wouldn't if there were any other way out of this. Believe, uh, believe me. What Larry heard. So they were talking about how the Earth wasn't round. <laughs> it's lonely being alone on Christmas Eve. That's why I was listening to an all-request show on the radio scene. I was listening to it real boom and loud, like... But I'm sure I heard that gunshot. I remember exactly what the DJ was saying, but I heard it too. Well, what the fuck was he? Okay. You were listening to your radio at a high volume. Yeah, what's the big problem? It's like having someone next to you, you know? Sometimes I talk back. That's why I don't use a debit card. It's nice to have to go to the bank that someone has to talk to me. Can't a man listen to his radio in peace? Isn't this a free country? I truly believe Larry has no idea what the problem here is. Judge, can you believe a word this witness says? What he heard was nothing more than a drum beat from the radio. <laughs> I'm trying to remember this the song where it's the the um bop the beat of my drum or the beat of my heart it was in a movie na, 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 dun, 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 dun. yeah that's it boom clap yeah the it the time for me to have remembered that is gone now but thank you it was gonna bother me true enough it is difficult to believe this testimony isn't life isn't life stranger than fiction your honor wait your honor the witness said he remembers exactly what the DJ said when he heard the gunshot. Excuse me? Uh, a DJ? The only DJ I listen to is the, the third Bill, or when he streams, <laughs> Bill Show Gaming. An, an announcer. The, the guy who says the things on the radio. Anyway, what this means is when he heard the sound, no music was playing. The DJ only talks between songs, so we could have heard the gunshot from the lake. If only that were true. Every once in a while, I've had, like, a song cut too early, and it's like, uh, who wants to win tickets to a thing? I'd like to cross-examine the witness, Your Honor. Uh, very, very well, Mr. Wright. I can't believe I'm continuing the charade. Yes, that's how I'm saying it. Charade. Ugh. What Larry heard. It's lonely being alone on Christmas Eve. So I was listening to an on request show on the radio, you see? Listening to it real booming loud, like, I'm sure I heard that gunshot. Exactly. Okay, what was the DJ saying, buddy? Come on. What did she say? Mr. Wright, please cease these pointless questions. What possible good could, could, could knowing what a radio DJ said do us? Indeed, Mr. Von Karma has a point. I'll allow the question only if you see some reason why we should care. Uh... We don't. We should care. We should care, Your Honor. Of course we should. Why? Uh. What? I thought it was going to tell us, like, because it's going into freaking Christmas. I'd assume the host would have said it's 20 minutes to Christmas. We Three, two, one, it's Christmas. Something. Fine. Very well. Mr. Oh, okay. I thought it was the game was penalizing me. Mr. Butts, please testify to the court. What was the radio announcer saying when you heard the gunshot? Yeah, thank you. 
just when he said, hey, it's almost Christmas, I heard the gunshot. Larry, are you absolutely sure what you're saying is correct? Huh? What's with the face? You look scary, dude. Hey, if you try to scare me, you better know I don't scare that easy. I'm a big boy house. <laughs> is, is something the matter, Mr. Wright? Your Honor, did you hear what the witness just said? The DJ said, hey, it's almost Christmas. And not happy holidays. <laughs> He's lying. Uh, I've come full circle from some dude yelling at me for wishing him a happy holiday. Then I went, if it makes you feel any better, buddy, I don't mean it. I'm lying. I don't care what kind of winter you have. I'm just being nice because I need to get tipped so I can pay for food and rent. Uh, anyway. He, the DJ said, hey, it's almost Christmas when he heard the gunshot. Indeed. And... Almost Christmas means it wasn't Christmas. Do you realize what this means? What we heard the gun what when he heard the gunshot, it was still Christmas Eve. Is that what what? Almost Christmas means it wasn't Christmas. Is that a big line to everybody? Is that really? <laughs> I, you know what? Like I, I have a divorced family. So almost Christmas is Christmas. I had to go to my dad's on Christmas Eve. So whatever team radio DJ. Really? Oh, I can join it this year. <laughs> what what day is Christmas Eve? This is I'm assuming on Christmas Eve everyone says almost Christmas isn't Christmas. What day is it? Oh, it's a Sunday. Christmas is on a Monday. So I don't think we're streaming on Monday. I don't know. It depends on what our lives look and feel like. Um Cause if I'm like snowed in, I don't mind jumping in and doing a stream for anyone else stuck at home or without something to do um <laughs> oh man oh. Haley you should be you should be RTing all of my T's or I guess reposting all of my posts I fucking hate the internet you should be engaging with all my social media things all the time. <laughs> um, that would seem to be the case, yes. <laughs> Sorry, now I'm seeing the chat full of almost Christmas means it wasn't Christmas. <laughs> uh, that would seem to be the case, yes. But he should have heard the gunshot after midnight. In my wildest fantasies. This photograph is irrefutable proof of this fact. Let's see what the time was on the photo taken when the gun triggered Miss Hart's camera. 12 two slash two five zero zero dot dot one five. Fifteen minutes after midnight on Christmas Day. This is a clear contradiction, Your Honor. Order. Order. What does this mean? The two prior witnesses heard gunshots after midnight. However, this witness says he heard a gunshot before midnight. Judge, the answer is simple. We are sitting on two sides of a time zone. The current, wit the current witness is plainly mistaken. Just look at him. Suspicious. What? What? Hmm. Well, Mr. Wright, what do you think about Mr. Butts' claim he heard the gunshot before midnight? Uh, he's right. The gun was shot like a thousand times. Larry's not mistaken, Your Honor. 
He heard that gunshot before midnight. Uh. Mm. Intriguing. I am assuming you have evidence for this wild claim. Show me evidence that there was a gunshot before midnight. No. Why am I still hanging on to the metal detector? Uh, hardly. Can I finally present the pistol now because it's been fired three times? I guess the second lake photo. Something had to happen. It was taken at 11.50. That's before midnight. But I don't think I can prove it's a gunshot, can I? <sighs> Yay! <laughs> Every time I see this, it makes me laugh. Look at this photograph. <laughs> just love, he's just slapping the evidence. It's a picture of like a dead body, and he's just. <laughs> Look at this photograph. This was taken by our witness yesterday, Miss Lotta Hart. Ha, I can't say her name. Miss Lotta Hart with her automatic camera. The timestamp on the photo reads December 24, 1 1 colon 5 0 p.m. Oh. Hmm. But. There's nothing on the lake in this picture, Your Honor. The real issue here is not why nothing is shown in this photograph. It is why this photograph exists at all. What? What do you mean, Your Honor? This photograph was taken by an automatic camera. The camera was set to go off in response to loud noise. Loud noises. Ah, ha. Huh. Correct. There. Aha is indeed the right response. Thank you. There was a loud noise on the lake at 11.50 p.m. That is why this photograph was taken. In other words, when Larry heard that gunshot, it was most definitely still Christmas Eve. Almost Christmas isn't Christmas. Indeed, it would seem that is the case. Then where does that leave us? Miss Hart testified that she heard the gunshots after midnight. Are you claiming she was mistaken? Not at all, Your Honor. It is a fact that the camera also triggered at 15 minutes after midnight. Your Honor, that night there were two sets of gun... gun that night there were two... Sorry, everyone. Can I take my dramatic moment back a beat? That night there were two sets of gunshots with a 25-minute pause between them. Thank you. Nailed it. First try. Good thing we're not doing this live. I'll just edit it. Yeah, you can fix the post. Two gunshots between them. Ugh. Why, why would this be? Don't be fooled, Judge. The camera was set to respond to loud noises. Yes? Uh-uh. There is no proof that the loud noise at 11.50 was a gunshot. Why, the witness could have sneezed triggering the camera. Hey, my nose was clear. Wow, now they're attacking me. And I thought I was being such a brave boy for soldiering through these streams to do this finale for everybody on Labor Day so while I'm congested as fuck. So rude. Tell me that I'm being a good, brave little boy, chat. Hey, my nose was clear that night, man. Clear. Hmm. Well, Mr. Wright, there's no turning back now. Don't ever look back. Don't ever look back. Can you prove that the loud noise at 11.50 p.m. was indeed a gunshot? Please show the court evidence if you have any. Fuck. Um. Would it be the pit? Would it be the pistol? Can you stop hiccuping? It's really taking for my thunder. It's my half birthday. I'm congested as hell. And now you're hiccuping. 
please. I'm trying to focus. You're jeopardizing my bravery with your shenanigans. Are you okay? Your face is turning red. I feel bad. Is it because I put you on the spot? I don't like. I don't like when people know that I hiccup. But. Oh, can you speak in full sentences so I can remember what I'm supposed to be proving? Uh, the gun was fired three times? I guess it's got to be that the gun was fired three times. If two were after midnight. The first time it was fired was in 1864. Yeah, Judge. Take that. This is my evidence. Blam. I really wish. I. That's got to be why it's facing that way. Because where it's positioned, if it was faced the opposite way, it'd be, this is my evidence. <laughs> like, that'd be amazing. <laughs> this is my evidence. The uh, murder weapon. Something about this pistol was bothering me, Your Honor. Both of the witnesses who testified yesterday heard two gunshots. However, the murder weapon was fired three times. Now, I ran this with several professionals who will testify to the following. Three is more than two. No further questions. When, then, was the last shot fired? Only now have I realized the truth. That third shot was the shot Harry heard just before midnight. Order. Order. Hmm. That would make sense of the evidence we've seen so far. However, this leaves me wondering exactly what did happen on that night on the lake. Exactly. If this is true. <laughs> oh, God. If this is true, there were two sets of gunshots separated by 25 minutes. One at 11.50, another at 15 minutes after midnight. Why, I ask you, why? Uh-oh, I better think of something quick. Bruh. Wait a second. Gunshots separated by 25 minutes. Ah! Damn it, Bobby. I was trying to do a Hank Hill. It didn't work. What's wrong, Nick? I have it. I have it. Huh? Remember the case with the Steel Samurai? Uh, yeah, of course I remember. The murderer in this case had the same idea as the murderer in that case. What do you mean? Maya. Yes? If we don't figure this out now, we'll never overturn Edward's guilty verdict. I've got a hunch, and I'm going to run with it. Ugh, right. I mean, is this safe? Safe? We've already gotten a guilty verdict. We have nothing left to lose. Nothing left to lose. You lost your... What was it? You lost your world. You lost the game. Anyway. <laughs> oh, such a good song. You just watch and let me know if I say anything that sounds fishy, okay? Right, Nick. Your Honor. Uh, yes, Mr. Wright. The testimony just now has cleared up this entire case. Uh, feels like just yesterday I was listening to the music of Tangled going, what a silly cash grab, and it turned out to be the greatest spinoff from, like, a mainstream Disney property that isn't Kingdom Hearts. <laughs> oh, man. I might actually guess, please. I don't know. I just did a video about Fiona and Cake, and that might end up being a better spinoff. We'll see. But my expectations were in the ground for Rapunzel's Tangled Adventure. I'm like, okay, here to make money. Oh, wow, this is actually really good and should be a stage show. Sorry, I just get so emotional when I remember Tangled and how it was done so dirty by not continuing. But they're going to do a live-action remake? Fucking... I hate it here. What do you mean, Mr. Wright? Tisk tisk tisk. 
So you finally realize the truth. Live actions are the future. <laughs> there can be no other murders here other than Miles Ed murderer here other than Miles Edgeworth himself. Wrong, Von Von Karma. Von Karma. A man was shot that night, but it wasn't. It wasn't Edgeworth. <laughs> I was so confused. A man was shot that night, but it wasn't Edgeworth. Yeah, Phoenix. That's not what you're trying to prove right now. It's just Edgeworth's just quietly bleeding and hasn't told anyone that he's been shot for the last like four days. A man was shot that night, but it wasn't Edgeworth who did the shooting. Uh uh uh. Listen, rookie. Take a deep breath and consider the facts. At the time of the murder, one boat was on that lake. This was shown by the witness's photograph. The defendant Edgeworth... Ooh, it moved. The defendant Edgeworth and the victim, Robert Hammond, were on that boat. There was a gunshot fired on that boat and Robert Hammond fell into the lake. The distance of the shooting was one meter. It couldn't have been that. Still got to stick by YouTube's rules. Oh, man. Yeah, I'm getting a little leaky. Luckily, I don't think anyone can see it. Well, the guilty party has to be the other man on that boat. I admit it is hard to imagine any other possibility. Yes, but this assumes that the victim was shot at 15 minutes after midnight. What do you mean by that, Mr. Wright? We have photographic evidence of the time of the shooting. The timestamp on the photo says 00. Dot dot one five. But Larry heard a gunshot 25 minutes before that. Robert Hammond was killed then. 25 minutes before the shot on the lake. It's the only way that Edrith could be innocent. Mr. Wright, are you quite mad? Explain who the two men on the boat are. Uh, Edgeworth and the murderer. Because we're saying that the murder took place before midnight. This photo happened after m midnight. So Hammond is already dead. The murderer met Edgeworth on the boat and just fired a gun? That's too calculated. But then Edgeworth would know who the murderer is. Of course it was Edgeworth and the murderer. After the murderer killed Robert Hammond at 11.50, he assumed... Uh, okay. He assumed the guise of Mr. Hammond and met Edgeworth. What? what? Are, are you serious? Yes. Edgeworth won't tell us why he went to the lake that night. However, I have a hunch. That night, Robert Hammond called Edgeworth to the lake. Now, Edgeworth didn't know Robert Hammond's face that well. That's why he didn't suspect anything when the... When the murderer took Robert Hammond's place. I'm not sure what to make of all this. L Ludacris! Mr. Wright. Tell us the name of the murderer, then. The murderer's name? Uh, right, it's... Miles Edgeworth. Sorry, all I can think about is Miles Edgeworth. Uh, IDK. How? But they found me? Uh, actually, I don't know the murderer's name. Oh, the boat rental guy? You... You don't know? Bah! Again, you waste my time! You're a time vampire! I don't know because he never told us. Huh. The murderer is the caretaker of the boat shop. That old man. Is it? At 11.50, he was the one who killed Robert Hammond. The caretaker of the boat shop? Where did he do this? There weren't any boats on the lake then. Why would he have to go all the way out on the lake just to shoot someone? May I suggest that the real scene of this crime was not on a boat? What? But everyone goes on boats. There's literally a hit song in the, in the early 2000s, dropping soon, called I Am On A Boat. Well then, where did the murder take place? 
Show the judge that the murder really took place. Fuck. Why? At the place? Uh... How the fuck was I supposed to know this? If the camera's here, I guess it doesn't matter because it made a sound when the thing exploded. I'm just gonna assume the boat rental shop? Thank God. I'm like, there's no, like, I don't know. It could have been in the woods. It could have been right behind her. It could have been in her car while she was getting, like, coffee or something. Here, of course, the boat shop where he lives. The way he could meet, that way he could meet with the victim without anyone seeing. Do you have proof that the boat shop was the scene of the crime? Yay! I'm such a good boy, I'm being rewarded. Recall Larry's testimony, if you will. Read it while I slap it. <laughs> that night he was out on the lake in a boat searching for something. He finds it and returns the boat. Then, just as he's starting to head for home, he hears a gunshot. He heard a gunshot, Your Honor. Even though he was wearing headphones at the time. Oh, I'm clever. In other words, the gunshot was very, very close by. Probably aimed at him. And where would that and where where would that be if he had just returned a boat? The the boat shop. <laughs> Mr. Wright, what happened that night on Gord Lake? Please tell the court from the beginning. Yes, Your Honor. Nick, are you sure about this? Uh, not really. But I think if I start at the very beginning, it's a very good place to start, and I take it slow. I might just be able to figure this out. That night, the caretaker of the boat shop called Robert Hammond to his shop. Oh my god. Oh no! Oh, the bird is the witness. I saw everything! This was around 11.50. That was when the gunshot that Larry heard was fired. After that, the caretaker put on Robert Hammond's coat. He became Robert Hammond. When he got in the boat with Edgeworth and went out into the middle of the lake, then who fired the pistol on the boat, Mr. Wright? The boat shop taker. Yeah. Why wasn't this part of Miles' testimony? Dude just shot a gun and then someone died of a gunshot wound and everyone's blaming him? Of course, it was the murderer who shot the pistol. He shot twice. Both missed Edgeworth. On purpose. Wait a minute. Yes? Why would he shoot twice if he didn't mean to hit anyone? Uh, it, 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 details, details. Know this, Mr. Wright. The moment you run out of explanations is the moment you lose. Tell us why the murderer had to fire twice. To create a witness. I believe he shot twice to create a witness, Your Honor. Create a witness. The murderer lifts his pistol and fires one shot. That ensures that anyone who heard the shot would look at the lake. I indeed, Miss Hart did exactly that after hearing the first gunshot. Next, the murderer, the murderer, the murderer waits a bit and he fires again. Then. The murderer jumps from the boat himself, leaving the pistol in the boat behind him. Yeah, why wouldn't Edgeworth just testify that that's what happened? And that handsome, handsome idiot, that himbo, picked up the gun for no good goddamn reason. I see. To someone looking from the edge of the lake, it would appear that one of the men on the boat had shot the other. The murderer didn't know about the automatic camera, of course. That's why he shot twice to draw attention to the boat. Hmm. Once you realize that, everything else falls into place. The boat shop caretaker swam back to his shop. 
Then he put Mr. Hammond's wet coat back on the body and threw the body into the lake. This is what happened, Your Honor. These are the events that transpired that night on Gord Lake. Throw the confetti, bitches. I think I nailed it. Did I do it? Bailiff, bring out the witness from before. The boat shop caretaker. Quickly. Oh, yeah. Poor Larry's just been standing there this whole time. Right? I mean, that's cool, but it feels a little anticlimactic. Very well. While we are waiting for the caretaker, I would like to ask the defendant, Miles Edgeworth, a few questions. Mr. Edgeworth, please take the stand. What the hell is your problem? <laughs> Just say that. Mr. Edgeworth, you heard what the defense has said. Yes. Well, why did you go to the lake that night? <sighs> what Wright has said was mostly correct. Mostly right, if you will. It's the same as my list of crushes. Mostly right. Astonishingly so, actually. Yes. Several days ago, I received a letter. Oh, cool. More ev It's like he's setting up his own... Oh, is that the Kate? Is that the twist? Was he told to, like, set this up for the prosecution like he would his own case? Like, was did someone put him up to that? That or he's just a pretty dummy. Uh, the letter was signed. Robert Hammond. He asked me to come to the boat shop by the lake at midnight on Christmas Eve. He said he had something very important to discuss with me. Something important? I'm sorry. I can't say what it was. Okay. Oh, sorry. <laughs> the dripping is driving me nuts. Can't say what it was. Hmm. Hey, Giannis, uh... Bailiff, we are conducting a trial here. I ask that you remain quiet. The witness has disappeared. He isn't at the boat shop either. Wait, what? What? What do I... What, what should I do? Well, find him, quickly. We cannot allow him to get away. <laughs> Mr. Von Karma, your witness has disappeared. Oh, good thing that's not my responsibility. The search warrant has already been issued. Hmm. It goes without saying that I cannot declare a verdict under these circumstances. I will extend the trial until tomorrow, the final day allowed. Something I keep forgetting that this this uh, anime's universe uh, murder trials run on Majora's Mask rules. <laughs> you have three days, 72 hours. I will extend the trial until tomorrow, the final day allowed. I request that the police department utilize all its forces to find that witness. Am I understood? Hmm. One more thing. Just who is that boat shop caretaker? I think his identity has become very important to this trial. I want him. I want him. I want to know who he is. Very well. Court. He is adjourned. Yay. Yay, Nick, you did it. Yeah. Well, at least we got out from under that guilty verdict. And what, a, and what about Larry? That was something else. Even Von Karma didn't know what to do with his testimony. Larry really helped us out. Sure. Once I sifted through his uh, unique testimony. Still, he did save us. I just wish our cases weren't so down to the wire all the time. I know what you mean. Sometimes I feel like it's us on trial instead of our clients. Hey, Edgeworth. Uh, Mr. Edgeworth? Uh, did, did you say something? Don't look so pained. I mean, it looks like you're probably going to get off the hook. You could try to smile just a little. Relax. Uh, I'm sorry, but I fear it's not over for me yet. What do you mean? Right. 
there's something that's been troubling me for a long time now. And I don't know whether or not to tell you. Edgeworth. Are we getting married? What's happening? No. There's so little time. No. There's so little time left. I want to Oh my god, kiss. I want to tell you to get it off my chest, but... <laughs> that was a bad idea. Yeah. I can't make up my mind. What is this about? What is this about, Edgeworth? That night. I still think about that night. It's... Oh my god. A nightmare I've had. Where I ask you to marry me and you say no. And it turns out I'm late for an algebra test. A memory of a crime that I committed. Not telling you I love you? What are we getting at here? A crime you could Please... Oh, never mind. A crime of passion, a crime of love, a crime of the heart that I didn't tell you sooner. A memory of a, oh, his dad's murder. Oh yeah, we still have to talk about that. Well, we've been talking so much about this. I forgot that like Robert Hammond was somehow involved in Edgeworth's dad's Biz. <laughs> I appreciate that someone liked my post on threads. Uh, the push notifications to get on my phone are really intense. Because, like, I can't see the logo so simple and I don't recognize it still yet that I'm like, what's this warning about? Like what's going on with the weather? It's nothing. <laughs> Maya, are you all right? I just, I really had money down that he was going to confess his love for you today. I lost $25,000. What was Mr. Edgeworth talking about? A memory of a crime that I committed. A memory of murder. I really thought we were going for something romantic. Do you really think Mr. Edgeworth killed? I don't believe it. Not Edgeworth. Some painful memory has been troubling him recently. But he'd never take someone's life. Never. Nick. Yo, how's everyone doing? What do you think of my performance today? I had him swooning in the aisles, huh, Maya? This swooning? Me? Oh, uh, yes, I do remember feeling faint. Right on! Tell me the truth! It was like love at first sight, what? Right, Nick? Uh, me? Uh, maybe my heart skipped a beat or two? I think you could do better than that! Come on! I saved Edgeworth in there, dude! Edgy! I'm basically gonna be your best man at your wedding, come on! Or at least the officiant! Something! Ring bearer! Come on! You guys should be bowing before me when you say your nuptials! Yeah, bow before your hero! Larry, you really helped out in the trial today. You did! If you weren't there, Larry, I'm sure Mr. Edgeworth would have been found guilty. <laughs> but seriously, Nick, that boat shop caretaker guy is pretty sus. Vicious. But Edgy ain't off the hook yet. Way to spoil the mood, Larry. Hey, I'm just a guy sitting in the audience, you know, saving lives and changing destinies. But from where I was sitting, Edgy seemed pretty... Well, edgy. I mean... Can you really know he's... Can you really know he's telling the truth about that night? Nick? I... I don't know. But... What I do know is... I'm gonna believe in you two until the end. Us two? Yeah, I'm confused too. Edgeworth and... Who else? You mean me, right? Nah, 
He means me, right, Nick? Yeah, you, Larry. Not me? But why you, Larry? Huh? Um, actually, yeah. Why me, Nick? I'm sure somebody does, but I haven't seen any fanfic about, like, throupling. Enough with the silent treatment. Nick, why do you trust Mr. Edgeworth so much? Why do you trust Larry so much? I mean, he's changed recently, true. But when we first met him, he was kind of a jerk, don't you think? He's also committing several felonies per case. What? You didn't know him back then. Back when he wanted to become a defense attorney. Wait. Was that when you two were classmates? Oh, right. When they were... I thought... In my mind, I always picture grad school, not grade school. Yes, in grade school. They saved me. Miles and Larry. They saved me. And I'll never forget it. That's why I became a defense attorney. You know? What? Hey, hey, Larry, what's he talking about? Huh? Oh, mm. uh, sorry, I kind of forgot. Mm. Okay, Nick, out with it. I'm going to hear the story today, and that's final. Okay, okay. It's kind of a long story, so hang in there. It was the very end of third grade. I was on trial. Of course you were. Jesus. A class trial. A class trial? You remember, Larry? Spring, end of third grade? A kid in our class got his lunch money stolen. Lunch money? Money for lunch, Maya. Catch up. Come on. Psst, psst, psst. Our school was really small. Every month, kids would bring in an envelope with money for lunch from home. Oh, I see. Anyway, this kid's envelope disappeared with $38 inside. You gotta understand, that's like $3.8 to a third grader. Oh, yeah, now that you mention it, I do remember that. I could see why you'd forget, though. You were out of school that day. Anyway, the envelope had been stolen during PE class. I was coming down with a cold. Oh my god, this is based on my life. I was coming down with a cold, so I'd skip PE that day. I was the only one not in class. So, they thought you did it? Yeah. The kids in class said I should be put on trial. Trial? So the next day, we held a classroom trial with me as the defendant. Did everyone bully him? I... I didn't do it. Guilty, he did it! Guilty, it was you! Thief! Give the money back! You're such a meanie, no one play with him. Just admit you did it, you can't find the truth. Tell us the truth. You're not gonna play- We're not gonna play with you anymore yet- Oh my god. You really should be loud in the relay race. Give me back my 50 cents I loaned you. Hey, did you rob the bank? What the fuck? These kids suck. Now, Phoenix, you know you shouldn't steal people's money. It's not right. <laughs> what the fuck is your last name, kid? The irony. In the end, even the teacher thought I'd done it. Go over and apologize, Phoenix. Oh, look at the little boy in his tiny spiky hair and his silly shirt. I... I didn't know what was happening. I was so sad, I, I couldn't stop crying. Everyone was staring at me like... like I'd done it. I tried to apologize. I went to where the boy whose money had been stolen was sitting. And that's when it happened. He shouldn't have to apologize. The only thing that belongs in a trial is evidence. Anything else has no place. You should all be ashamed, amateurs. Miles? Miles? Look at the little boy in his little bow tie! Oh, he's so adorable! Oh my god. Oh, it's so cute. And they carved their names in a tree. They promised they'd get married one day. Look at him. Oh, he already had gigantic hands in third grade, huh? 
It, it wasn't you who stole my money, was it? No. Then you shouldn't apologize. Oh, and it was Edgeworth's money. Everyone's been shouting you did it, but no one has any proof. That is why, Your Honor, this boy is innocent. But, but, Miles, it was your money that was stolen. Yeah, yeah, he did it. He's the one. You don't need proof. What? <laughs> why don't you all? Why don't you all just shut up? Why don't you all just shut up? <laughs> Why don't you all just shut up? This is always how it goes. Everybody ganging up and picking on one person. Just think how he feels. He said he didn't do it, so he didn't do it. Look at little Larry. This is fun. Very well. I will... Damn! Okay, can we get a shout-out to teachers? I will replace the money myself. Let's see, it takes place in, what, 2000, 2001, 15 years ago? Like, it's like 30, what, $38 in the 80s on a teacher's salary? What fucking legend? This class trial is over. That's how it happened. After that, the three of us were the best of friends. Wow, I had no idea. Yeah, I had no idea either. I mean, I forgot. That's when I learned what it meant to be alone. Totally alone without a friend in the world. You did a good thing, Larry. Uh, yeah, well... I was just lucky that I took that day off from school. If I'd been there, they would have thought I'd done it. Haha. <laughs> so I, I took it kind of personally. See, when something smells, it's usually the butts. That was really sweet. It's really silly. Like we had a <laughs> this this lawyer anime style video game story as a flashback to a class trial. It's very on the nose, but I actually ended up really really liking that. Um, anyway, Edgeworth and I talked after that class trial. That's when I heard his father was a defense attorney. I remember his eyes would shine when he talked about his father. I'm going to become a defense attorney, just like my father. A famous defense attorney. And then something happened to where he did the literal opposite of that. <laughs> then a few months later, he suddenly transferred to another... Oh, yeah, his dad died. Jesus. The DL6 incident. Right. I'm not sure, but the transfer probably had to do with his father's death. That's so sad. It was several years later when I heard Edgeworth's name again. There was an article about him in the newspaper... The headline was something like, Dark Suspicions of a Demon Attorney. Fabricating evidence, manipulating testimonies, covering up facts. Oh, so the guy who killed Edgeworth's dad got away with it. And he's like, I will put everyone in jail. It's still really fucked up, but I see what I see. I'm, I'm connecting the story now. The article said he'd do anything to get a guilty verdict. Anything. But why? What happened? I mean, that's not the edgy I used to know at all. It's almost like we're not exactly the, the same person we are in third grade until like our late 20s. That's what I thought too. I tried to get in touch with him. I tried to get in touch with him I don't know how many times. He never replied. I guess he didn't want to see his old friends. I couldn't just drop it, though. I wanted to meet him. To learn why he had become who he became. That's when I decided. Wait. You you became an attorney just to chase your fucking boyfriend around? 
Phoenix Wright. That's why? That's why you became a defense attorney? To meet Edgeworth? <laughs> I thought it was like, I appreciate being defended. So, but no, he just, that's... <laughs> <laughs> that's the second time now I've heard I've seen media where someone became a lawyer to, ch to chase a boy it's not a lot but it's weird that it happened twice I knew he'd have to meet me whether he wanted to or not in court Edrith believed in me and I believed in him he's in pain and no one's on his side I'm the only one who knows the real Edgeworth. I'm the only one who can help him. Whoa, Nick! So, so, so is that... Is that why you helped me out for free? Uh, yeah. I helped you because... I believed in you. Oh, look at the sweet boy. Except, I don't remember saying that I'd do it for free. Oh, Nick! 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 We have to save Mr. Edgeworth. It's the last thing we... If it's the last thing we do, okay? Right. Very well, maybe. If we don't get enough members, donations, liking, subscribing, comments of encouragement, this might be the last Phoenix Wright thing I ever do. <laughs> Please pay an extra five ninety nine if you want to continue playing this game. Um, first, there's that rental boat rental boat shop taker. We need to find out who or what he is. I'd settle for who. I guess I can clean out some of this evidence I no longer need. Okay, let's go, gamers. What did we... We didn't get rid of that much. Okay. Uh, yeah, just go down the list. Hey. You look as grim as always. Huh. Um, Mr. Edgeworth, I heard the story about the class trial. Class trial? What do you mean? Did everyone forget about this but Phoenix? My sweet, sweet little simpy boy? <laughs> this changed the history of his whole life. And to you guys, it was just a Tuesday. <laughs> what do you mean? You, you don't remember? No, I don't. It was third fucking grade. Your lunch money was stolen, wasn't it? In third grade? Lunch money. <laughs> oh, all right. Yes, I seem to remember something like that. Nick, I think you're the only... <laughs> oh, my God. Well, it probably only really mattered to me anyway. Mr. Edgeworth, didn't you know? That trial was the reason Nick became a defense attorney. Ridiculous. Gee, thanks. That said, it does sound like the kind of thing you'd do. You silly, beautiful, foolish fool. You haven't changed a bit, have you, right? So simple. To a fault, even. Oh, well, close enough. Well, maybe, yeah. But I think you changed too much, Edgeworth. Oh. Duh, I hate my allergies so much. <laughs> Perhaps. Why prosecute? Hey, Edgeworth. Why did you become a prosecutor anyway? You used to look up to your dad. You said you wanted to become a defense attorney, right? Yeah, in third grade. I couldn't let myself deny reality like you. What do you mean? My father was taken from me, and you want me to defend... criminals? I'm sorry, right, but I'm not that good of a person. One suspect was apprehended in your father's murder, right? Yes. The man trapped in the elevator with my father... His name was... I almost said Yami Yugi. Oh my god. I'm so sorry. His name was Yanni Yogi. He had to be the shooter, any way you look at it. Yet, he was found innocent. That defense attorney got him off the hook. That would be Robert Hammond. <laughs> On that day... Fifteen years ago. Ooh. The three of us were trapped in that elevator for five hours. When we were rescued, 
We all suffered ox oxygen deprivation. I lost all memory of the murder. Lost your memory? Even now, I can't recall what happened in that elevator. That was the crux of Yogi's, Yogi's attorney's argument in court. He claimed he had a Yogi had not been of sound mind due to the oxygen deprivation. Yogi was released due to a lack of evidence. Innocent. That's what I changed my mind. I started to hate defense attorneys. What's your relationship with Von Karma? He's my teacher and a man who deserves respect. Yeah, I kind of noticed from the ascots. Uh, I learned everything I know of courtroom techniques from him. You know, how to cheat and rig the system to put innocent people in jail. So he's like my he's like my sister was to you, Nick. He is a perfectionist in all things, in court, in his personal life. He is obsessed with doing everything perfectly. Perfectly, huh? In all the cases he has taken on, none were left unsolved. And not one suspect was declared innocent. Ever. But, but that's, that's not how things work. I know. It's possible some of the suspects were indeed innocent. However, it is impossible for us to accurately determine that in every case. Especially when people like you rig the system, all Von Karma does, all Von Karma does is his job to find the suspect guilty perfectly. In any case, it's nigh well impossible to find a weakness in him. Yeah, I do like that it does kind of make you wonder why isn't our goal in reality to find the truth, not the defense must prove you innocent and the prosecutor must prove you guilty. Shouldn't you be content with truth? Anyway, it's nigh well impossible to find a weakness in him. Should a weakness appear, he would do everything in his power to make it go away. Uh, Edgeworth, if what you're saying is true, you're headed for a guilty sentence tomorrow. He's right. Now, Now's no time to praise the enemy, Mr. Edgeworth. It's a strange situation in which I find myself, I'll admit. No kidding. Oh, he looks scared and sad. Uh, feel like I should go to the lake last? Looks like Detective Gumshoe hasn't come back. Uh, Gumshoe, he won't be coming back today. We killed him. Oh, really? He said there was some guy he had to arrest by tomorrow. The boat shop caretaker. He shouted something about catch move is the last thing I do, pal. Good luck, Gumshoe. The, we found the one good cop, and it's Gumshoe in the Phoenix Wright series. He's my boy. Um, what happened to the... No? Yeah, Grossberg. There we go. That was weird. He's out again. When does he work, anyway? Now, now, don't be harsh. I guess we'll have to come back later. Fuck. Okay, well, there went that idea. I genuinely thought... Someone was going to be like, here's what you should look for at, at the lake. And then I go to the lake. I guess I got it backwards. Hey, pal. Long time no see. Wow, that does not feel good in my throat today. Ugh. Oh, Detective Gumshoe. Clo close one today, A. Eh? I got so work it up, I snap in my tie and half. Uh, sorry about that. No prob, pal. Thanks to you, we now know who really did it. You mean the boat shop caretaker? Look, I'll make you a promise. I'll have that scoundrel in my custody by treal time tomorrow. Come what may. It's my duty to you as a police officer. Oh. Now I'm off to catch me a criminal. Detective Gumshoe sure is active today. Oh, one other thingy. Yeah. No one can go into the woods today. 
Sorry, Steven Sontheim. The woods? Where Lada was camping? <laughs> she was murdered. The woods are off limits to camping, and apparently the park ranger found out. He got pretty mad. No one can go in for a while, eh? I guess Lada's in a, a lot of trouble. Anyway, I'll be seeing you tomorrow. <laughs> so stupid. Huh? The steel eyesore is missing. Eyesore? Looks like the hot dog stand is closed, too. I guess Larry's too busy worrying about Mr. Edgeworth to show up for work. Aren't we all? Uh, guess we're going to the rental shop. That old caretaker got away. Yep. I never imagined he might be the real murderer. Eh. Ahem! I'd know that clearing of the throat anywhere. Oh! Well, almost nailed it. Uh, he hello! What might you be doing here? Uh, out for a walk, hmm? Ah, the days of my youth. Like the scent of fresh lemon, you see. Mr. Grosberg, there's no time for idle reminiscing. Mr. Edgeworth's trial ends tomorrow. Uh, that is true, yes. But from what I saw of today's trial, Mr. Edgeworth should be fine, right? Uh, I'm not so sure about that. Ho, ho! What do you mean by that? Well, I'm, I'm not sure. Uh, if you find anything out, come by my office at once. I may be able to offer you some assistance. Thanks. Bye. What do you think Mr. Grosberg was doing here anyway? Who knows? Time to go to the mystery shack. Nobody's home. <laughs> Hello. Hello. Squawk! Hey, it's Polly. I wonder where your owner's gone, Polly. Hello. Hello. Squawk! I can't believe he'd run off and leave his poor parrot to fend for herself. Hello. Hello. Squat! <laughs> uh. That reminds me, Nick. Polly here knows the, member, the number to the safe, right? Yeah, that's right. Polly, what's the number to the safe? One, two, two, eight. Squat! Let's open it, Nick. Come on. I'm sure there isn't any money in there. Aw. Hey. He keeps it locked, right? So there must be something of value in there. I'm not so... Shut up, Phoenix! We need evidence to save our fucking boyfriend. Okay, Nick, let's see what's in here. I guess there might be a clue or two. The only thing in here is... A letter? <sighs> that's not a letter. That's a whole piece of paper full of letters. Boring. Uh, there's no name or signature on this thing. It's handwritten in very precise, clear letters. Get your revenge on Miles Edgeworth. Edgeworth? Nick, why would Mr. Edgeworth's name be on here? How should I know? I'm, I'm going to read the whole thing. Get your revenge on Miles Edgeworth. It also says, this is your last chance. Now is the time to get revenge on the two men who ruined your life. The rest of the letter goes on to describe the murder plot in detail. How to kill Robert Hammond and frame... Oh, someone did put him up to it. Calling Edgeworth out to the lake, getting on the boat, firing twice is exactly what I figured out today in court. It's all here in perfect detail. I'm suspicious as fuck now. Excuse me. That'd be the most annoying twist if, like, turns out I did it and it's been, like, kept from the audience for suspense. What do you think it means, Nick? I don't know, but it, it looks like there are instructions for that caretaker. When he killed Robert Hammond and called out Edgeworth, he was following instructions. But who could have written that letter? And what does it mean to get revenge on Miles Edgeworth? It's probably someone who's in love with Phoenix. Look, I don't know, okay? But one thing's for certain. This letter is an amazing clue. Fuck yeah. 
add to that court record. Jesus. Okay, so someone did put him up to it. Fishing pole looks expensive. Maybe we should bring it to Detective Gumshoe. Oh, that was the other thing. Don't you think the caretaker would mind? Well, we could just leave him the metal detector in exchange. Maybe we better not. Everything's cold. Looks like he didn't turn his heater on. I guess he hasn't been back. Oh, thanks, Lindsay. Lindsay liked. My post on the post media that used to be about birds. I guess he's been back here since the trial. And I guess we're taking this bird with us. Oh my god, yes! Maybe I should take care of Polly, Nick. You probably shouldn't just kidnap her. The police know about her anyway. I'm sure they'll do something. Oh, okay. Sorry, Polly. He says I can't take you. Great, now the bird's gonna hate me. Ah, it was re that'd be such a fun, because there's at least two more of these games. Like, the bird's chilling and like, haha, like... My, my best buddy Maya here is a spirit medium and talks to my mentor who's dead's ghost. I'm a buddy new attorney and this is our pet parrot who's witnessed a murder. <laughs> That'd be amazing. Is there anything else to do in here? Doesn't look like he used the kitchen much. You're right. I guess the whole pasta restaurant thing was a lie. What, you thought he was telling the truth? Bye. Bye. Beach entrance. Uh, damn it. Damn it. Damn it. One day left, Nick. Yeah, I know. Well, no time to waste. Let's get going. <laughs> what do I do? What do you think we should do now? You should. You would know best, Nick. Just do what you do. <sighs> what have I not done? I don't know the next two games of the trilogy if you play as Polly. Oh, Polly also solves the crimes. Yeah. Uh... The boat rental shop. Doesn't look like anyone is around. The caretaker must have run for the hills, huh? Yeah, it looks like it. He didn't seem like a bad person. They never do. There's some boats floating at the dock. The murder took place the murder took place in a boat from this dock. Apparently the police took away the actual boat that night. The boat that was used that night. Indeed, there's space for one more boat at the dock. So did I just not get something from the shack? <laughs> Say, Nick, don't people usually put pictures of fish up on the wall to boast about them? Yeah, I guess so. I mean, pictures of the fish they caught, right? Right. But don't all the fish on the wall here look really puny to you? Well, you know what they say. You should have seen the one that got away. So that one got away from us. Oh, my God. The caretaker got away from us. Yeah. Why do I feel like we're having two different... Yeah, I'm so confused. Okay, well, turns out all I had to do is touch the, uh, trash can. W what's wrong? Huh? Oh, n n never mind. Come on! Just when I saw the TV, I remembered. They're showing a Pink Princess special this week. See? That's why I didn't want to tell you. Damn it, I thought I did something good. Goddamn video games. Yeah, I've... There's nothing left in the safe. I wonder why the caretaker didn't take the letter with him. He left in a hurry, right? I don't think he even came back here after the trial. Then what do I do? Beach? Do I give the letter to Edgeworth? Wouldn't that just upset him? Edgeworth, see this letter? Uh -huh. This came out of the safe in the shack where that boat rent... God damn, can we just say, like, the old man lives? Where that boat rental caretaker lives? I see. Revenge. On me? Who is that old guy anyway? I... I don't know. 
Could he be an innocent defendant? You got declared guilty or something? Nice, right? That's a good question, Phoenix. But I don't remember that old man. Not at all. So he was following this letter then. Which means there was someone else behind it. Now is the time to get revenge on the two men who ruined your life. Two men, meaning myself and Robert Hammond. It also says this is your last chance? Last chance? Well, maybe... Maybe he's talking about the statute of limitations on the DL6 incident. Wait. Wait, that old man. What, what is it? Do you, know, do, do, do you know who he is? Yogi. Could he be Yogi? Yogi? The suspect in the DL6 incident. The one who is found innocent. There we go. Gany, or Laurel, depending. Yogi was a court bailiff at the time. We just happened to be in the uh, that elevator together 15 years ago. God, that's hurting my eyes. The quake was incredibly strong. Before I knew it, everything was dark. We were there for so long, it felt like forever. The air thinned and the darkness closed in on us in that little box. We became... unsettled. I uh, help, I can't breathe! Quiet, I said quiet, you're not making this any easier. I want to get out, help, get us out! Don't shout, you'll just waste more oxygen. <laughs> Sorry, I'm... <laughs> I didn't think I was going to need to really craft a character voice. That's all I remember. When I came to, I was in a hospital bed, staring up at the ceiling. In court, Yanny. Yanny. In court, Yanni Yogi's mental condition was called into question. They claimed the oxygen deprivation and stress had caused temporary insanity. In the end, the claim passed the claim the claim passed the court and Yogi was found innocent. Huh. But isn't that strange? This letter tells him to get revenge on Edgeworth. Why would he want to take revenge on you? Yeah, right. Yeah? There's something that's been troubling me these last few days. I didn't know whether or not I should tell you. You mean the nightmare? It's a nightmare I've had. A memory of a crime that I committed. A crime you committed? A memory of a murder. I think I think tell all in which way oh for the last god I need to make this microphone closer to me for the last 15 years I've had the same dream almost every night I wake up in a fearful sweat every time what kind of dream it's a dream about my father's killing in the dark Come on. Help, I... Help, I can't breathe. Quiet. I said quiet. You're not making the city easier. I want to get out. Help. Get us out. Don't shout. You'll just use up more oxygen. I... I... I can't breathe. You're... You're using up my air. What? Stop breathing my air. I'll... I'll stop you. Uh, what? What are you... Stop breathing my air! No. <laughs> no. Father. He's attacking father. Then I saw the pistol lying by my feet. I don't know if I if it was evidence from that day in court or the bailiffs. In a daze, I picked up the pistol. Get away from my father. Did... 
did Miles like accidentally kill a guy? Did he accidentally kill his dad? He doesn't remember what happened, and neither did the other guy, because I feel like the dude being accused of murder, his defense would have been, the kid threw a gun and accidentally shot his dad. Huh. It's a bone-chilling scream. Yeah, no shit. A scream that a scream that has rung in my ears for the past 15 years. God, yeah, right? God damn. But that's just a dream, right? Right? That thought is the only thing that has kept me sane for the last 15 years. But what if I'm wrong? What if it's real? They say that sometimes people shut out memories in self-defense. Maybe it was I who killed my father. Yeah, well then why would it be shut out of the other guy's memory too? What? If you think about it that way, this letter makes sense. Get your revenge on Miles Edgeworth. Think about it. Yogi was really innocent. That's why he wanted revenge against me. Wait, Edgeworth. You, you mean it was me? I was the true criminal of DL6. I shot my father. This is bad. What are we going to do, Nick? What can we do? I don't know. I don't think there's anything we can do, like it or not. If there's someone else who knows a lot about the DL6 incident, maybe. There is, Nick. The only other person we've talked to in this chapter. There is someone else who knows about DL6. <laughs> okay, thanks for telling us all about that traumatic experience. Bye! It's silly to have to leave, but that's the game. Uh, Mr. Grossberg. Ah, hello there! What's wrong? You look troubled! No kidding, I can't believe you're not. My, my, my. Just calm down and tell me what happened, hmm? It's, it's Mr. Edgeworth. He, he, he... I see. So Edgeworth dreamt he shot his own father. It's only a dream. Only a dream. I wonder. What? If that's the case, then why do you two look so troubled, huh? Well... Also consider this, Yogi quite certainly holds a deep grudge against Miles Edgeworth. So deep, he'd want to frame him for murder. This leads me to surmise that Mr. Edgeworth's dream was not a dream, it was real. As you imagined, Miles Edgeworth threw the pistol to save his father. The pistol fired, and the deed was done. Are the drawings canon? Can I go off of that at all? Because that doesn't look like it's going to land and shoot forward. And if he's throwing it to his dad, then it didn't shoot his dad. Or this is just a visual thing for my sake. Pistol fired and the deed was done. Ugh. No. I don't believe it. Yogi was suspected of murder and his career as a bailiff was irrevocably wrecked. Oh, so it was probably his gun then, yeah. Thus he sought revenge on Miles Edgeworth. This was his last chance, of course, with the Statue of Limitation so close. Why was the medium called in? What do you know about Edgeworth's father? He was a defense attorney without peer. It sounds trite, but it's true. In fact, you're probably going to start reminding Edgeworth of his, of his deceased father pretty shortly, so, you know. Bank on that shit. Well, he, he may have had one peer, now that I think about it. Your mentor, Mia Fey. My sister? Gregory Edgeworth was very dis disapproving of Mr. Von Karma's techniques. That's no surprise. Von Karma's an extreme man. Forged testimonies and evidence are nothing to him. The result? He has a perfect win record in court. To beat him, Gregory Edgeworth tried to call attention to his methods. And? He lost and died in despair, as it were. Huh. I see. <laughs> when Gregory Edgeworth was killed, the police called out a spirit medium. That was your mother, Misty Faye. 
I was hoping I get to. I am Gregory Edgeworth. I have been killed, killed, killed. The one who shot me was the bailiff, Yanni Yogi, Yogi, Yogi. Yet Yogi was found innocent. Oh, okay, well, so then he did shoot him? I'm like, I'm assuming the twist is that their mom was right. But, anyway. That's when my mother left us. Everyone called her a fraud. That's right. Even me. Everyone thought she was, you see. Yet, now that I think about it, it seems the one who lied was Gregory Edgeworth's ghost. Gregory Edgeworth must have known who shot him. I, I don't believe it. So you're saying he falsified his testimony? That Edgeworth's dad lied to protect his son? It's only a possibility, mind you. But a possibility nonetheless. Hey, Edgeworth, do you think your dad's ghost would have covered for you? Okay, good. I was like, please don't let me actually say that to him. No. No. That is interesting. Damn, I'm always missing something. Ah, she was a beautiful woman. Truly sorry about what I did. Huh? Sorry about what? I think I'll stay out of this one. You okay? This incident took place 15 years ago tomorrow. So tomorrow we'll see the completion of not one but two trials. All thanks to the statute of limitations. However, I'm afraid the damage the DL6 incident has done will never be eased. Gregory, Gregory Edgeworth, he was a gifted man. His death was truly a loss. Wonder what would have become of Von Karma were he alive. Oh. So this is the letter. It does seem that Yogi was following this letter when he killed Hammond. But why kill Robert Hammond? Hammond was a skilled defense attorney. But he defended clients not for their sake, but for his own. Huh? His own sake? He never trusted his clients, that one. The only thing he trusted was his own ability. But he got his clients found innocent, so why should it matter? Actually, my dear, it's quite different. He won that innocent verdict for no one but himself. What? Yogi was a free man, but socially he was ruined. Huh? You'll understand soon enough. Wait. What is it? This letter. It was Von Karma. Okay, is that what we're getting at? I've seen this handwriting somewhere before, a long time ago. Yeah, as soon as he was like, if, if only Mr. Edgeworth's dad wasn't dead, something would have happened to Vol Von Karma. Okay, so if he recognizes the handwriting, or it's Mia, pretty sure it's Von Karma. I've seen this handwriting somewhere before, a long time ago. Whose handwriting was this? Do you have any idea who wrote this? Oh, and then process of elimination. Someone wrote it to Yogi, and it wasn't Miles. Really? Could it be Manfred Von Karma? Von Karma? Why would he have something to do with this? Because you've literally said three times that his, his like, whole career was being investigated by like at least one of these men. Uh, well, I'm not sure. Huh? Thank karma, thank karma. Wait, you're right, my boy. How sure? Like, will you come with me to the... Really? This is Von Karma's handwriting, I'm sure of it. I used to see it all the time on court reports. But that means th the one who told Mr. Yogi to kill was... Correct? Manfred Von Karma himself. What does this mean, then? 
Really? So... Did... What? Oh, was he... Was he assigned this case and knew he was going to lose, so then he tried to, like, change it? No, he wrote the letter beforehand. What? Why would Von Karma want to frame Edgeworth? What? If it was... If it truly was Von Karma who wrote this letter, then he would know the truth. He would know that Miles Edgeworth had accidentally killed his own father. He'll say as much tomorrow in court, I should think. He'll press the point until the court finds mo of killing it. What? What? Then how? Hold on. What? So the statute limitations aren't up in the DL6 incident. So he's going to try to open it up because has Von Karma gone insane because no one was found guilty? There was no prosecution in that case? What? I thought that the whole, like, the conflict for this final case was going to be like, the dude doesn't care that Miles didn't do it. He's going to stop at nothing. And it's like, we have to, like, actually prove it and convince everyone. Huh. That's a much different direction than I thought this was going in. How could Von Karma know about Mr. Edgeworth's past like that? Even Mr. Edgeworth thought it was just a nightmare. That I do not know. Oh, God. Well, I'm assuming Edgeworth told him if that was his, like, mentor. Oh. It's ironic that we're building a 100% win record while we're trying to teach these two other lawyers to stop being obsessed with their 100% win record. <laughs> Yet I do know that Von Karma is both persistent and a perfectionist. He may be seeking to satisfy a grudge against Gregory Edgeworth by hurting his son. Oh, that's a good point. <laughs> what do you mean? It was 15 years ago. Von Karma met Gregory Edgeworth in court. Von Karma did win. But he didn't make it through the trial unscarred. What? They beat the shit out of each other in a courtroom. That's why they have to separate you at opposite sides of the room. <laughs> what happened to the trial between Edgeworth's dad and Von Karma? Von Karma got the guilty verdict he wanted. He won the trial. But Gregory Edgeworth accused Von Karma of, fa of faulty evidence. And though he lost the trial, Mr. Edgeworth said... Oh, I've got to stop this voice. And though he lost the trial, Mr. Edgeworth's accusation stood. My voice is getting tired. Faulty evidence. It was the only penalty Von Karma's... I'd rather save it for, like, the fun court stuff than just talking in a room. Uh, it was the only penalty Von Karma has ever received in his career as a prosecutor. Oh, okay. Gregory Edgeworth dealt a blow to his perfect trial record. Is that how that works? Wow. Must have been quite a shock for Von Karma. He took a vacation for several months after that, you see. A vacation? Yes, an unusual event for the man. That was the first and the last vacation he's taken in his many years of prosecuting. Really? He doesn't take vacations? Like, go to the sea or to the mountains? Don't tell me he's never been to Europe. You have strange ideas about vacations, Maya. In any case, that was the only time he took a vacation from work. I believe the penalty upset him quite a lot. That would be kind of cool. Like, if it does, like, all kind of reflect on the perfect record thing. I just don't see how getting Edgeworth falsely accused of murder would counterbalance that. Logically. 
But if the man has truly lost his mind and isn't thinking logically, that would be a fun breakdown to see. Uh, if he wanted to keep a perfect record so badly, why would he take such a long vacation? Would that affect his record? Excuse <coughs> me. What do we do, Nick? Von Karma is going to bring up the DL6 incident. You can bet on it. What if Mr. Edgeworth pleads guilty to DL6? I won't let him. Uh, yes, Mr. Wright. I hate to say this, but even accidental... Yeah, I guess, but it's like... It's like manslaughter or something, right? And he was a child? And it was 15 years ago? Like, what What do you... What? I'm going to focus on the emotional turmoil this is causing Edgeworth than the legal logistics of it. I know that. I, I just believe in Edgeworth's innocence. I can't believe he'd kill someone. But Nick, Mr. Edgeworth admits it himself. His father must have lied to protect him from beyond the grave. Well, now you're being influenced by someone else's theory. Uh, which you should if it's mine, but no one else's. Um, I don't care. I know he's not guilty. Mr. Wright, if you say so, I suppose I, I could go check again. The police files might hold something of interest. Mr. Grosberg, thank you. I can't promise anything. In fact, I think the chances of finding something are slim. I understand. The police materials. Hmm. Okay. There we go. There's hardly anyone here. Imagine everyone must be out looking for that old guy, Yogi. Ah, it's you. I don't think Gumshoe will be back here today. He's staying out late looking for someone. Sounds like Detective Gumshoe is pounding the pavement for real. Uh, we were wondering if we could check out the records room again. Well, now I can't just have anyone wandering around in there, but I guess Mr. Varun Karma is in there now. Can we not be? Come on. You can go in as long as he's there. Is he going to beat us up? Right? That's a bad idea. This man is unhinged. Yes, he just arrived, actually. Von Karma's in the records room. Nick, let's hurry. Can someone come with me? Or, like, a little, little doll up there? Stick a camera in its eye? Oh, no. We're going to get a, a front-on visual of Von Karma. Dusty as always. We were only here just yesterday. I'm sure they haven't had time to clean. What's wrong, Nick? Nothing. It's just... I was just noticing that he isn't here. On Karma. Huh? One of the drawers here is open. Someone must have been looking at it recently. The label says, Unsolved Cases Evidence. <laughs> Pretty sure no one's allowed in here without, like, some supervision. Unsolved cases. Nick, the file for DL6, it's completely empty. What? What are you doing in here? Oh, he's so scary dead on. I don't like looking at it. He looks like the villain of a Studio Ghibli villain's story. <laughs> Ugh. Yeah. L Von Karma. You. How do you know my name? Huh? Have we met? Nope. Bye. Uh, what are you saying? We see each other every day, don't we? We're Miles... Maya, shut the fuck up. We're Miles... We're Miles Edgeworth's defense team. Defense team? M... I beg your pardon, you see, I rarely remember defense attorneys. They are like bugs to me, needless things to be crushed. I can see how this guy was Edgeworth's mentor. Jesus, I don't like this man's, like, eye contact. Do I have to talk to him? Um, Mr. Edgeworth is your student, right? A romanticist who still can't shed the veneer of amateurism. A romanticist because he's seen how many times he writes 
Miles Wright in Phoenix Edgeworth in his notebook. Just like his father, always second rate. Mr. Von Karma, you had an axe to grind with Mr. Gregory Edgeworth, didn't you? Me? A grudge against a mere defense attorney? Why? Because he dealt a blow to your otherwise perfect trial record. Eh. So you did. But what I don't get is, why did you take his son under your wing afterwards? The son of your most bitter rival. That, my dear attorney, is Nunya. Tomorrow will be the last day of this trial. It's been a while since I've had a defense attorney last this long. <laughs> Sex. <laughs> Still, you will lose in the end. Miles Edgeworth will admit his own guilt. His guilt of 15 years ago, you mean? You're quite the researcher. If you've done your homework so well, then certainly you must understand. You know what Miles Edgeworth will tell the court tomorrow. You were right. So Von Karma is going to bring up DL6 in court tomorrow. Is it really going to have me be stupid enough to show the letter to him? Mr. Von Karma, have a look at this. This was you, wasn't it? You instructed y Yanni Yogi to commit murder. Yanni Yogi! How many years has it been since I've heard him called by that name? He's a fool! I told him to burn it after he read it! Just like that movie, Read After Burning! So you admit it. You wrote Mr. Yogi this letter. I really wish that we had to figure that out ourselves. Or if, like, hey, I found this letter. Oh, you should also, like, show it to the prosecution. And it's like, this is our big moment to be the bigger person. And, like, yeah, here's evidence. And then he goes, he should have burnt this. What? Instead of talking about it with Mr. Ghostberg. It's a little thing, but... Suspense music should be kicking in while I'm figuring it out. You, you wrote Mr. Yogi this letter. Yes, my dear defense attorney. Thank you for taking the trouble of bringing it to me. You've saved me from a lot of needless hassle. What? what? Yeah, what the fuck did... <sighs> right, there's no other way around it. Nick, what is that thing? Uh... Oh, a stun gun. A stun gun for self-defense, usually. Indeed. 600,000 volts will course through your body like a dog touching it all. Jesus Christ. 600,000? Oh, don't worry. People don't die from it usually. Now, give me the letter. No. No. Whoa, what are you? Nick, oh my. No. Dude, you just attacked a child. You're going to jail and hell. Hell jail. Hey, officers. This man just attacked a fucking child in the records room. She's okay, though, right? I just realized he said 600,000 volts of electricity should be fine on a... On a grown adult man but she's 17 and small of course the chef McGill wouldn't care to give him a taser. how can you even touch it without tongs or your space blanket <laughs> this fucking chicanery yeah, she's good. Just saw her sis for a sec. that's not funny is she really good like she's okay <laughs> Maya out of my oh Hello? Can we get some fucking police in here? Like, Jesus. Where it... I mean, I hope that that kind of is like a plot point moment soon. Because, like, he does... He is supposed to have, like, everyone in his back pocket, essentially. And he scares everyone. But he just attacked us at a police station. The letter's gone, of course. And he took all the DL6 and... Yeah. 
Back to having no clues. Wait, Maya jumped first. Maya, is she okay? Maya. I feel like you'd be telling me more people are freaking out right now if she's... Sorry to be using chat as evidence, but if you were spamming, oh no, oh no, oh no, oh no. I'm using you as evidence right now. Maya, open your eyes. Maya? Yay! Okay, good. Oh, we're both dead. The letter. Did he take it? Huh? Oh, yeah. Uh, are you okay? I... I couldn't stop him. I jumped as... Oh, kiddo. I jumped as fast as I could, but one shot from that thing knocked me out cold. I'm useless. I'm no good as a lawyer. Or... Maya, you're not a lawyer. Or a medium. I can't even call my sister. Not even now when we need her the most. I wish I hadn't woken up at all. Jesus! What? Maya. Uh, there has to be some way I can help her. I better do something about her self-confidence first. Maya. She's holding something. What is that? A bullet? DL6 incident evidence number seven. Taken from the heart of Gregory Edgeworth. And then I'll turn it into a locket. Because I have the heart of Miles Edgeworth. No, I'm kidding. Okay, that's cool. I remember. Von Karma was holding this when Maya jumped him. Yeah, okay. So he... He shot him. I'll prove it to you, Maya. You're most definitely not useless. I'll prove it to you in court tomorrow. I like that sentiment. It's getting real because the music's playing. I wish I wasn't so congested. Oh, man. Okay, so he... I'm still trying to piece all this together. I feel like there's still some pieces I'm missing here. Like, Von Karma can't be trying to, like, frame Miles for murder just because he's a bad dude like there's got to be like a, a little more otherwise that's really annoying because i think it would be fine to just put it as he doesn't care that miles is innocent his perfect record means more and it's to like teach him a lesson because he's been losing lately like something really unhinged like that unrelated from either murder would have been cool now i'm like he needs to be a little more involved like he needs to have done something Otherwise, meh. You know what I mean? It was just, I'm evil because you put an asterisk on my on my report card. Like, no, like, you need to have, like, you need to be covering up something. Ugh. Oh, man. Quick reminder to like, subscribe, donate, become a member. Uh... Whatever, you get it. Go to thethirdbill.com to buy merch or donate. Or donate here. Or if you're watching this as a VOD, donate with a super chat. Or super thanks. Whatever. You get it. Help, I need money to pay for things. I'm at work while I'm sick. Please. Um, click the buttons. It's judgment day. I will intentionally lose if we don't raise the proper donations and new members you you become a member or i throw this all away i just if i keep it on the screen of is maya okay and i'm like we won't find out unless we make a hundred <laughs> just fucking hold everyone hostage that'd be so fucked today things are gonna get settled at last a lot of things ah! did oh she just bumped into me I thought the flashing bit, like, now she has a stun gun or we got tased again. I'm like, there's people right there. Who is tasing me in front of fucking cops? Okay. I guess the shock hasn't worn off from my run-in with the stun gun yesterday. I can't take that as a fun joke. A child was tased. 
Anyway, today's the last day of the trial. Good luck, Nick. Yeah, thanks, Maya. Edgeworth is looking glum as always. Hope Von Karma doesn't push him too hard. Whoa. What, what are you doing? Sorry. I'm sorry. I just thought I'd cheer you up with a pat on the back. Maya, maybe you should go outside and discharge. You need to ground yourself before entering. <laughs> it's Better Call Saul. Oh my god, this is Better Call Saul. I thought for a minute Edgeworth touched Phoenix and there was a electricity, so. Oops. Right, good idea. Try not to electrocute anyone on your way out, except Von Karma. Shock that bastard back. Whoa, pow. Booyah, pow. Is that an ashtray? What's goatin' into that girl? Detective Gumshoe. Morning, Mr. Edgeworth. Uh, good morning. How, uh, how did it go, Detective? Have no fear, as promised. I've captured our runaway caretaker. I just brought him in. Took all night, pal. Thanks, Detective Gumshoe. You must be tired. Actually, after that shock I got on the way in and these pills I found at the gas station, I feel pretty good. Yogi says he's forgotten his own name, but that has to be a lie. Why would he want revenge on Ed Edgeworth if he couldn't remember his past? He does remember, and I'm going to prove it. Yeah, you trained the bird to, to say things about the DL6 incident, right? Court is now in session for the trial of Miles Edgeworth. The defense is ready, Your Honor. The prosecution is ready. Are we not going to tell anybody that the prosecuting attorney just fucking attacked me, the defense attorney, but also this 17-year-old that's in my custody for some reason? Uh, right. Very well. We have reached the final day of our proceedings in this trial. I ask that the prosecution submit decisive evidence. Understood. Come on, don't be awed into silence by every little thing he says. Very well, Mr. Von Karma. Your opening statement. Right. Thanks to Detective Gumshoe's efforts, the boat rental shop caretaker has been arrested. In yesterday's trial, the defense asserted that the caretaker was the murderer. However, the caretaker has yet to confirm this. What? I would like to ask the defense to cross-examine him as much as necessary. Very well. Please, bring the witness into the courtroom. Oh. Ladies and gentlemen of the court, I believe you all remember our witness. He lives in the boat rental shop on the lake from where he witnessed the incident. In addition, he has currently lost mem he has currently lost memory of his name and identity. Witness, why did you run away yesterday? The witness was not running away, as he will now testify. I, I see. Very well. Please begin your testimony. Move. Oh man. Yeah, I'm really sorry about just leaving yesterday like I did, but I wasn't running away or nothing. I uh, went to buy some food for Polly, see? Figured I got nothing to do with this incident anyhow. I mean, I need one of those motive things, right? And I don't got one. So my testimony yesterday stands as is. Very well. Let's begin the cross-examination, shall we? He has to know his name. Yanny. <laughs> you call him Laurel and he turns his head and it's like, oh. Okay, Yanny Yogi. You're Yanny Yogi and I'm going to prove it. Okay. Fuck. All right. Food? Well, Polly's a bit of a gourmand, you see. She only eats those high-quality bird pellets from France. You only, you only have them at the big pet shop downtown. But you weren't arrested until this morning. Why didn't you go back to the caretaker shack? You mean his house? Uh, well, 
kind of got lost, you see. The witness. Hmm. The witness has trouble remembering things sometimes. When the police apprehended him, he was on his way back to the shack. Yeah, right. Nice try, Von Karma. No one's going to believe that. Hmm, I see. That's very believable. So he was lost. Your honor, cover your senses. I got nothing to do with this incident. Anyhow. Motive? How can you say you had no motive? I say you do. You had a grudge against Edgeworth and the victim, Robert Hammond. That's why you took revenge on them, right? Please don't make me repeat myself, Mr. Wright. This witness has no memory of anything beyond several years ago. He can't hold a grudge. It's impossible. Unless something happened in the last several years. I have to prove he's lying about his memory. Otherwise, it's going to be the same thing over and over until trial ends. First things first, I have to prove this man is who he is. Do that. The motive will prove itself. Can't we, like, fingerprint or something? Anyway, uh, what do I have left? It's got to be the bird, right? Answers to the name Pop. Fuck. I'd call what you did running away and not just leaving. You heard Larry's testimony and realized you were in danger. Fucking. Now, Mr. Wright, there's no need to rush to conclusions. As I said, the witness was not running away. Listen to the testimony! He sure seems relaxed. In fact, they both do, Von Karma and Yanni Yogi. I wasn't running away. Then why did you leave? He's just about to say why. Is it so hard for you to just quietly listen when someone is talking? If I sat quietly enough, Edgeworth would be guilty in three minutes. I went to buy some food for Polly. See? Figured I got nothing to do with this case anyhow. You've lost much of your memory, is that correct? Eh, uh, yep, seems like it. Then how could you know that you didn't have anything to- Ooh, I don't know. Uh, or, or maybe you're lying about not having your memory. Hmm, you know exactly who you are. The witness has testified quite clearly that he has no memory of who he is. If you claim he's lying, then show the court proof! Eh, uh. How am I supposed to prove what's going on in that old codger's head? That's impossible. Uh, I'm glad you've come to your senses, Mr. Wright. Very well, witness. Please continue. Might I say something, Mr. Wright? Uh, yeah, yes, Your Honor? You've been saying the same thing now, over and over. You're always, like, subscribe, donate in members. Shut the fuck up. <laughs> hey... <laughs> Just in time, thank you. Uh, I hope I say your name right. Ki ki kind, 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 Thank you for the fifteen A's. Thank you. I've uh, been really enjoying watching the series. This is my favorite video game, and I'm glad you've been having fun with it. Here's a bribe. I mean, some encouragement for you to play the other two. <laughs> well, thank you. Thank you for the dodo. Um, it's Australian dollars. Okay, six, six, six. I don't know why. I'm bad at acronyms. I even got confused um, in the Bluey video I did a little while ago with American Sign Language and Australian Sign Language. And I even did a bit about like how deep my Googling went because I looked it up and it's it, it still starts with A, but it's like, it's like I'm not going to remember it as long sign language. 
it's like specific, but it also starts with A, and then I'm like, why are they all called A? Like they all start with A. What's the point in doing this? Who am I? Why are we here? <laughs> like I, it just, I was like, let's not assume every every single sign language is called ASL, and I'm like, well, Australian. I should do some research and learn some things. And it still starts with an A. And I'm like, it's all ASL. Everything is ASL. And then I forgot what the difference is between ASL and SL. So anyway. What? Yeah, I said American Sign Language. What? It's laggy. It's definitely like Auslan. I hope I said that right. Thank you. Yeah, I couldn't remember how to say it. We all just bribe Bill to play all the games. That is the goal. It's called supporting more of the content. You need to watch it, like it, donate if you can, become a member, comment, share, like, numbers. And then I go, oh, I had fun. And people clicked on it and shared it. It was pretty popular. Let's do more. Otherwise, I'll play it on my own. <laughs> Wait, I'm dumb. No, you're good. But yeah, I... I got super confused, and here it is again. All there's every everybody a needs to only mean one thing, one letter per word. I'm bad at acronyms, is what I'm trying to say. But thank you for the fifteen Australian things dollars. Is it just Australian? Because that's the other thing too. Is like I don't want to assume dollars because that feels like like woo America's the only dollar ever. Everyone is subservient to us woohoo we're number one like it feels feels like american uh uh presumptions american what's the word like like just like cockiness arrogance like arrogant like everything must be called a dollar and i know that's not true it is dollars though yeah see this is how i get in my head australia and canada are also dollars yeah But see, yeah, then dollars isn't everywhere. So every time I'm like Australian dollars, and I'm like, I think I'm being stupid. And I, I just need to, I need to believe in myself a little more. Exceptionalism. That might, yeah, I think, yeah, I think you're talking about something smarter and and more direct. I'm just saying, like, I think it's arrogant of, I worry of coming across arrogant if I call every denomination of currency a dollar, whether or not I'm joking. Um, I just get in my head a lot. Also, people are mean. A assumption. <laughs> exactly. But thank you. Thank you for the donation. Um, and yeah. Okay. For the dollars, we also confirmed that. I don't know why. I just get so... like I, It's like that I want to learn everybody's name. You know, like it's it's impossible to make everybody happy, but I, I overwhelm myself trying to. Yeah. <sighs> And then that's weaponized against me. <laughs> oh, man. Giving a shit is exhausting. <laughs> um, anyway, thank you for the donation. And thank you for helping me articulate it in a way that makes me happy. But yeah, I I also appreciate it because like it just, it just has the A. So like YouTube isn't even very clear with it. So... Thank you for the 15 A's. <sighs> I'm getting out of my head and back into the moment. Because I do. I think it's, I think it is the effort I put in to try to like, oh, I'm going to like say the name, I'm going to say the name right. I'm going to say this thing right. I'm going to do my best and I'm, I'm going to laugh at myself along the way. And I think it's just, it's just, it just turns into stress after a certain point. Ooh. back in the moment but thank you that really does help a lot that pays for games helps me pay off equipment and um helps bill with some of his bills if there's anything left over so thank you that is greatly appreciated click on things kids you've been calling you've been calling the witnesses memory of the past or lack thereof into question but does this really have anything to do with the current case? Of course, Your Honor. The witness has said he has nothing to do with this case and no motive. Both of these statements are lies. 
Order, order. Mr. Wright, there is a serious problem with your claim. Or are you saying... Are you saying you know who this witness is? Of course, Your Honor. Ho, ho, ho. Now this is interesting. I would like to know myself. Who is he? Don't play dumb, Von Karma. Mr. Wright, please, tell us this witness's name. This feels like the beginning of the game where it was like, can you tell me the name of the defendant? Yin Yogi. His name is Yanni Yogi, a former court bailiff. I almost gave myself a funny ass name for no reason at all. Yogi? That name sounds familiar. A eh, boo boo. Oh! Yanni Yogi from the DL6 incident. It figures the judge would have heard of it. It was such a famous case. But what does this but what does this mean? Your Honor. If this man is Mr. Yogi, then he has a clear motive. Tisk, tisk, tisk. Uh, uh, uh. Jumping to conclusions again, Mr. Wright. This man, this witness is Yanni Yogi. Fascinating. However. Huh. How do you propose to prove this to the court? This is a court of law, as you may recall. You need proof. And allow me to repeat. Once more, that the witness has lost his chain of memories. This is it. I have to do this now. If I can't prove he's Yogi right here, right now, then I've got nowhere else to go. Nick, how are you going to prove it? How can you prove that he's Yanni Yogi? It's okay. It's actually quite simple. Your Honor, please take this man's fingerprints. Then we'll compare them to the fingerprints on... Ah, oh, that means it's not going to work. I see. That makes sense. Tisk, tisk, tisk. Huh? I've cut off all of his fingers. I'm so very, very sorry, Mr. Wright. Why? The witness has no fingerprints. Uh, okay. Son of a bitch. What? What? No fingerprints? Hey, you see, before I worked as a caretaker, I worked at a chemical plant. I burned my fingers working with the stuff, yep. What? Yogi, you sneak. You burned your fingerprints off to hide your past. Hmm. Well, if the witness has no fingerprints, I guess we will not be able to prove his identity. No? Tsk, tsk, tsk. What will you do, Mr. Wright? Uh... Hmm? It seems the case has been decided, no? No. I know what happened. I know everything. I just can't prove it. But no, I, I, I can't let it end like this. I can't lose. There has to be another way. There is no one who can testify as to who this witness is. No one! Nick, what are we going to do? I didn't even consider that he might have erased his fingerprints. Oh, what do I do? Tisk, tisk, tisk. Well, Mr. Wright, perhaps you'd like to cross-examine his parent for a... Yes. Perhaps you'd like to examine his parent for a little comic relief. <sighs> yeah, very funny. You're a sore winner, Vaughn. Wait a second. Do it. I thought it was just going to be evidence. Please, God. Cross-examine his parrot. What is it, Nick? No, you're you're not going to, Your Honor. The defense would like to take Mr. Von Karma up on his proposal. Take, Mr. Yeah, it's almost like we're in a fucking courtroom right now, dude. You gloaty ass bitch. This is what you get. Take Mr. Von Karma up on my proposal. Exactly, Your Honor. I would like to cross-examine the witness's pet parent. <laughs> oh, my God. Oh, my God. <laughs> order, order. I'm trying not to just cough into the mic. 
Well, what do you think, Mr. Von Karma? Need you ask? This is a farce, I object! It's that or you get held in contempt of court, bitch. Wait a second. You were the one who suggested I cross-examine the parent, Von Ka Parrot Von Karma. I have a right to do as you suggested. Haley, thank you for the $2 donation. Thank you, Haley, for donating. You too can be a part of this by donating right goddamn now to be a part of the parrot testimony. Let's go. Let's go. Thank you, Haley, again. I have a right to do as you suggested. I'm going to like and subscribe, comment, share the link, like the social media post, donate, and become a member. Hmm. Huh. Well, if you're so desperate, then please be my guest. Of course, should you go through with this and nothing comes of it, then I hope you're ready for the consequences. <coughs> Nick, this is crazy. Well, still want to go through with your little game? Yes, I'm doing it. Let the parrot take the stand. Let the parrot take the stand. Let the parrot take the stand. Everybody, let the parrot take the stand. <laughs> let the parrot take the stand. Let the parrot take the stand. I will cross-examine her, Your Honor. This is the most ridiculous thing I've ever heard. Is that or you're held in contempt of court, ma'am? Oh my god, the lag is so bad. That Look at that delay. Oh, I love it. Look at that wall of let the parrot take the stand. Yes, rise. Rise, my army. <laughs> let the parrot take the stand. Let the parrot take the stand. Write that down for later. If you're up to helping me make it. But Karma's rigged every person's testimony, every piece of evidence. Except the parrot. She's my last chance. At least, I think so. Bailiff, bring in the parrot. Oh, I still can't breathe out of, like the right side of my nose is very off-putting. That's quite a bird. Please, tell us your name. Name. <laughs> I could just watch this forever. The witness is ignoring me. It must hurt to be ignored by a bird. Very well, witness. Who is your owner? Uh, ple please uh, uh, testify for us. Hello. Hello. What? Hmm. Certainly the most concise testimony we've had so far. Very well. Begin your cross-examination. Right. What are you going to do, Nick? I I don't know. I don't, what do we do, Maya? Uh. Hello. Hello. What? Objection. Witness, you can't just say hello and expect us to get anywhere. I want you to testify. Maya, talk to her. Right. Uh, what do I say? Uh, what's your name? Maybe I should get her to say her name. Polly Polly, what's your name? Polly. Pa Polly. Thank you. That was an amazing joke. Squat. Mr. Wright, I think we've established that this parrot is named Polly. Does this have anything to do with her owner's identity? I, of course. Yes, it does. Ah, fascinating. You claim that the parrot's name will prove her owner's identity? Then show us this proof. 
Nick, don't you think you're taking this bluffing a little too far? Listen, we're not here to answer the question of who is the caretaker. We're here to prove that he is Yanni Yogi. All we have to do is tie the name Polly to Yogi. Paul Yogi. Your Honor, the proof that the parrot's name reveals the caretaker's identity. Uh-oh. Uh-oh. The DL6 case file? That's quite a large file you have there. Which page is this proof on, then? Show us or stop wasting our time! Mm. Very well, Mr. Wright. Please, show us the page. Where in this file is the information connected to the parrot's name? It wouldn't be Gregory Edgeworth. The summary? Right? It wouldn't be the suspect either. His name wasn't Polly. Well, let me read it. Oh, well. Uh, no clues. Gregory Edgeworth. Defense, dirty, and trapped. Murders, fire twice. Any yogi. There we go. Polly Jenkins under suspect data. Sorry, I was just mining for some data. Thank you. Thank you. It was a joke, but please click on my shit and donate. Please. It's on the suspect data page. Bird? This page... Yay. This page has all the information about Yanni Yogi. Right after he was arrested. Fuck. His fiance did that. Hmm. Indeed, it does say that, yes. What was his fiance's name? Pa Polly Jenkins? Polly. Exactly, Your Honor. He wanted to remember the name of his fiance who did that. That's why he named his parrot after her. I see. I guess that is possible. Bah! A mere coincidence, that's all. My granddaughter has a dog she calls Phoenix. Well, Mr. Phoenix Wright, does that make you my granddaughter's fiance? She hot? Old enough and down to be added on to my relationship with Miles? I don't know. Maybe. Oh, I retract all of what I said. I thought it was the lady. I thought it was the lady in the trilogy artwork. Never mind. Ew, ew. Recant, recant, recant. It's the lady Edgeworth, right? In the box art for the <laughs> for the trilogy. <laughs> the fucking the wallpaper. Every time you open the game, there's a lady with gray hair. Don't look at me. <laughs> Is your granddaughter Miles Edgeworth? There we go. She's only seven years... She's only seven years old! Hmm. Indeed. Alone, it is a little weak for evidence in a murder trial. We would need some other corroborating evidence. Where am I going to find that? Nick, we're getting closer. One more. If we can just get one more piece of evidence. All right, but what? Hmm. Very well, witness. You may continue. I guess press it again so Maya will talk to her. Witness, you can't just say hello and expect us to get anywhere. I want you to testify. Maya, talk to her. Right. Uh... Oh, have we forgotten something? As I recall, two days ago... Polly, Polly, we forgotten something? What? Don't forget DL6. What? If I can get Polly to say that here, that will prove the caretaker had something to do with DL6. Polly, have we forgotten something? 
Hel Boo! You retrained your bird? Hello. Hello. Quack. That that's not what you're supposed to say. Forgot. Something we forgot. Hello. 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 Quack. It's not working, Nick. She won't say it. This is ridiculous. Why won't she say it? Tisk, tisk, tisk. Something the matter, Mr. Wright? Wait. Don't tell me Von Karma expected this. He couldn't have re retrained the parrot, could he? What, did he train her not to respond when we asked if we forgot anything? Well, I guess we should try to get some information out of her. We need to show the judge that her owner is Mr. Yogi. Uh-huh. Uh, what's the safe number? Oh, because it's like 1220-something. Maybe I'll get her to say the number of that safe. The safe? Why? Let's just try to get her to say anything, okay? Polly, what was the number of the safe in the shack? One, two, two, eight. That number again. One, two... Two, eight. My, what a reckless parrot. Well, Mr. Wright, you aren't claiming that this number has something to do with the caretaker. It does. Actually, it does. One day I want to be as confident as Phoenix Wright is when he puts his hands on his hips and looks slightly down. That's why I had her say it. Ah, ridiculous. How could the number to a safe tell us who the caretaker is? Show us your proof! What could possibly link this number to the caretaker's true identity? The DL6 case file? What is this obsession you have with that case? Mr. Wright, where in this file is something related to the safe number? I guess the summary. It's on the case summary page. The case... Sum Sumari. Specifically the date on which the DL6 incident occurred. The date of the incident? December 28th. Why, that's today's date. 15 years ago. <laughs> He's just like, how neat! Today in history. And the number on that safe is 1228. Ah! He used the date of the DL6 incident as the number for his safe, Your Honor. That's how important that date was to him. I see. It clearly is an interesting... <laughs> I'm trying not to cough. An interesting coincidence. People often do set their secret numbers to dates. But this is not tangible proof. I set my ATM card's number to 0001. Because I'm number one. This has nothing to do with a date. Nothing! Well, I'm stealing the fuck out of your identity when this is done. That's enough. I think we've reached a conclusion here. This is a mere coincidence, that's all. True, that is a possibility. <laughs> what? Oh, I already got it up here. Don't worry, chap. <laughs> Suddenly, uh, a $50, like multiple $50 <laughs> donations come in from Von Karma into the stream. It's like, oh, that's crazy. Thank you so much. <laughs> gift memberships, gift memberships, gift memberships. All from a Von Karma. Ugh. Okay. However, two coincidences at the same time seems more like a pattern to me. Well... What are you saying? Saying I'm taking your pin number, bitch. Summon the caretaker of the boat shop. Woo, excuse me. Immediately. Witness, tell us your name. Wait, this witness, he doesn't, <laughs> he doesn't remember. No. It's okay.
I've uh, going way up there, huh? I've accomplished what I wanted to do. I'm done. Nick, he looks totally different. This is the real Yogi, I think. Finally, he's been acting feeble to hide his true identity. Acting for 15 years. Well, let me ask you again. Please state your name for the court. My name is Yana Yugi. Yogi. Fuck. Thank you, Cornfay, for the two stolen from Von Karma. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> Thank you for the two. <laughs> uh, fair is fair, chat. If you're gonna steal from Von Karma, you gotta slip at least some of it into the into the stream donation. <laughs> Fifteen years ago, I served as a bailiff in this very court. I still can't do the full going way up there, huh, voice like I want to. It's not, I can't, I'm not very adaptable with it yet. Order, order. Yana, you, Yogi, I keep wanting to say Yugi. So who, what, so was it you? Too much is happening to my senses. So was it you who killed Robert Hammond? And tried to frame Miles Edgeworth for his death? Oh. We did it! Yay! Shoot the confetti. I thought we were going to have to argue with him a little bit. Yes, it was me. I did it. They put me on the witness stand 15 years ago. Robert Hammond, he said I was mentally unsound. He told me it would make me innocent, get me off the hook. So I pretended to have brain damage. I was innocent, really, but he didn't believe me. We won the trial, but I lost everything. I lost my job, my fiance, my social standing. Then, this year, ooh, holy crap. Owie, thank you for the what? The 20 CHF? Ooh, that's cool. I, um, I used to collect coins from around the world and stuff but i never bothered to learn what any of them were fucking called Sorry. Uh, i'm emptying von karma's swiss bank account thank you Awi, for the the 20 chfs swiss frank. that was very is a oh a swiss frank yep. that was i was about to say that's very smart to take his money fund it into different uh currencies from different places around the world so he can't refute the donations in his name that's cool. Thank you so much for the donation. That's that's wild. I don't know. I always find that stuff interesting, and now I'm going to rant about it for too long, so I'm not going to do that. Swiss franc. Can I ask what the C and the H are, then? Cha, Swiss francs. Yeah. That's what it stands for. Um, when I was little, especially because my grandpa would travel a lot, he would always like give me his change from his pockets from wherever he would go, and I, I kept them, and I, I didn't really have a coin collection, but I collected those coins. Um, I don't know. Never bothered to look them up. Nothing. This was before the internet, and no, I didn't want a book about coins. I just like polishing them and looking at them. Um, but either way, thank you so much for the 20 CHF, Owie, um, on behalf of Von Karma's bank account. <laughs> huh? Oh, okay. I'm not going to be able to read that, yeah. But, okay. Confoderatio Helvetica Frank. Awesome. Well, thank you for clarifying. I was just curious. See, we learn things today. We learn things on these streams. I am educational by nature. You're welcome, everyone. Um... Then this year, then this year, 15 years later, a package arrived. It was a letter and a pistol. The plan was written out in careful detail. It was a plan for me to take my revenge on the people who ruined my life. 
Why would you blame the child in the elevator, though, you fuckface? I didn't care who had sent it. I thought this was my chance after 15 years. This was it. Finally, a chance to have my revenge on Robert Hammond and Miles Edgeworth. I have no regrets. Well, wait a mo Wait a moment. Revenge against Miles Edgeworth? What do you mean? I am not at liberty to speak on that matter. Why don't you ask Mr. Edgeworth yourself? Anyway, I admit it. I was the one who killed Robert Hammond. Where's my confetti? Hello? Celebrate me, also pay me. Von Karma, where is Mr. Yogi? Under arrest, your honor. I saw no room for error in his confession. Then the defendant, Miles Edgeworth, is innocent. In this case, at least. Hmm. Very well. Will the defendant please take the stand? Wow, he is so broad, he's almost the size of the stand. Those shoulders. There are a few mysteries left unsolved. Still, you are cleared of suspicion for this particular case. Are ghosts real? That's <laughs> the mystery still left unsolved. <laughs> so I would like to pass judgment on the... Mu God damn it. So... I would like to pass judgment on the murder of Mr. Robert Hammond. Any objections? I don't believe it. Why isn't Varn Karma saying anything? Very well. This court finds the defendant, Mr. Miles Edgeworth. We did it! Fucking, there we go. Confetti, we did it. Where's the, where's the kiss? I want my face next to the two of them kissing or the two of them kissing me. Hello? Group hug? Handshake? Objection. Was that, what? No, that was... Was that Edgeworth's soundbite or someone else? No. <sighs> he's going to tell everyone that he's a murderer and we're going to have to... Oh my god. Edgeworth? Your honor. What? That is not the place for that animation, sir. I object to your judgment. What What do you mean? I'm not innocent at all. I'm a dirty, dirty boy who needs to be punished by the defense. As we have heard, Yanni Yogi killed Robert Hammond in revenge. But revenge for what? God damn it. At least the music's good. Nick, Edgeworth is trying to confess. He's going to say he's guilty. He's going to tell them he was the murderer in the DL6 incident. He's going to tell them he killed his own dad. Uh, what, what, what do I do? Object. This judgment has already been passed. I object to Edgeworth's out, outburst. Also, that's not how it works. Didn't something like this happen yesterday, too? I believe a certain witness raised an objection after a guilty verdict. Oh, you prick. That would be Larry. We must hear this new statement. We must hear Miles Edgeworth! He's right. We have a duty to hear Mr. Edgeworth out. <sighs> For 15 years, I have had a recurring dream. <laughs> you stop. You're wasting the court's time talking about your fucking dreams? Not guilty. Get out of my courtroom. A nightmare. It's only a nightmare. That's what I told myself. But now I know it wasn't a dream. Yanni Yogi wasn't the killer. You mean, in the incident where your father died? 
from the distance of the shot, it wasn't that either. Everything was as clear as day. The murderer, the criminal in the DL6 incident, it was me. Your Honor, I confess my guilt. Thank you, Unwinnie, for the $2 donation. Consider this one for Von Karma's bank account. And it was your first one. It does get those little notifications. It's cute. Thank you for the $2, Unwinnie. I super appreciate that. Everyone, see if you can find some in, in your hearts to find some of that Von Karma money. Remember, his pin number is 0001. Um, thank you so much. That's super appreciated. Every dollar helps, and that means a lot. And it's fun to keep the bit going because <laughs> I still can't believe he was like, "Hey, court, I need this this guilty verdict so bad. I'm gonna tell everyone my pin number, and then genuinely ask after saying after saying to cross examine a parrot, <laughs> saying, "Hey, do you want to go out with my seven year old, Juliana? Thank you for the two seventy nine California dollars." This is also your first super chat. Look at those little balloons. It's cute. Thank you. Thank you for the 279, Juliana. Um fuck was I saying? Yeah, that man gave us his pin number, said, why don't you cross-examine a parrot? And then went and then genuinely said, Are you dating my seven-year-old? On a court record. Oh, thank you for clarifying that. California dollars is a long going inside joke. I know it's Canadian. Thank you for the 279 Canadian. That's embarrassing. Yes. Oh, man. Oh, let's go. I am guilty for DL6, the statute of limitations, which of which ends today. Stop. Doing that, the culprit is me. Order, order. This is certainly unexpected. The defendant declared innocent is confessing to a different crime? Anime, am I right? A crime for which the statute of limitations runs out today. Regardless of the medium, that would be a really cool twist in like a legal drama. Like movie show or in this case game it's a cool twist it's just silly i'm not really sure how i should deal with this bah, it's obvious we hold a trial right here right now we tried this man for his crime of 15 years ago it this feels like a it feels like a witch hunt i think i think i should like to take a five minute recess during this time, I will consider the appropriate course of action to take. Uh, there we go. I was trying to adjust everything, and it did not move, and that freaked me out. Court is adjourned. I, I mean, obviously, this isn't how the real world works, but what, I guess if someone incriminates themselves for a different case... It'd be their obligation to follow it up or see it through, right? Or would it be up to the, the district attorney's office? I'm so sorry, right? I've just wasted all of your effort. Mr. Edgeworth, I just don't believe it, sir. I mean, you kill your da. I didn't want to believe it myself, detective, but it's the truth. I deserve to be punished. I must be punished. Punish me. Punish me. Murder is murder, no matter what the circumstances. This is crazy. Just crazy. Nick, what are you doing? Huh? Oh. I was just reading through the court record once more. I'm getting my case ready. Your case? For what? Huh? Is it obvious? I'm going to prove that Miles Edgeworth is innocent. Naughty, but innocent. <laughs> da ding! What are you talking about, pal? He just admitted it to it. 
he confessed that he did it in court. I'm sorry, Edgeworth, but I, I don't believe your nightmare. I think you're just making shit up to get my attention, and now you have it. I don't believe your nightmare. W what? It's just a dream. It's not real. The truth is right here in this court record. In any case, tight in any case, tighten your belts. The real fight is just beginning. I'll prove you're innocent. Trust me. R right. When he says that he's being facetious, right? Like we could do this in the next hour, right, chat? Please someone confirm that. I'm sick and it's my half birthday. Please. Now then, I would like to resume our trial. Judge! Miles Edgeworth has admitted his own guilt. He has confessed his crime. Let us begin by hearing his testimony. Then through point... Then, then though pointless, let the defense do the cross-examination. The statute of limitations on the DL6 incident runs out today. Though it's unconventional for me, I'd like to run this one by the book. I see. Does the defense have any objections? Uh, we're just gonna filibuster until midnight. Eat shit, Von Karma. My naughty boy is coming home with me. No, Your Honor. Von Karma, you knew this was gonna happen from the very beginning, didn't you? Very well. Will Mr. Edgeworth take the stand? Will the witness state his name and profession? Miles Edgeworth, I am a prosecuting attorney. Mr. Edgeworth, 15 years ago, you mistakenly killed your father, Gregory Edgeworth. Is this correct? It is correct. Then testify about this matter to the court. When Edgeworth was telling me about his dream yesterday, I noticed something. One detail didn't quite fit. Why wasn't I in his dream? That will be the key, but only if I can get it to work. Please, please, please. That day I had gone to the courtroom to observe one of my father's trials. A typical afternoon for a third grader. As we went to leave, an earthquake struck, trapping us in the elevator. My father and Mr. Yogi lost their composure and began to argue. Just then, something heavy fell at my feet. I picked it up and threw it at Mr. Yogi. I wanted them to stop fighting. A moment later, there was a single gunshot. Then a scream. It was a terrible scream. I remember it to this day. That's all. What? He threw the gun at the guy? Hmm. And until now, you thought the memory was a dream? We were stuck in that elevator for five hours. The oxygen in the elevator ran out, and I lost my memory of the events. Uh, the same claim Mr. Yogi has made. <coughs> Very well. Mr. Wright, your cross-examination, please. Yes, Your Honor. Oh, my God. Got a courtroom. Just like these trials. Turn this elevator. What was it? A pistol. I assume it was the bailiff, Yoni Yogi's. The safety must have come off when it fell from its hole. That's not how that works. Then you picked it up. What happened next? Did you know it was a pistol when you threw it? I think I knew. I knew it was dangerous. But the air was getting so thick, I panicked. So you're saying... So you're saying that you threw the, panel at the pistol at Mr. Yogi? I was in a daze. Single gunshot, then a scream. The gun fired once? Yes. I think after I threw it, I lost consciousness. Since then, they've echoed in my head every day. That gunshot and that horrible scream. Scream. Uh, 
Uh, that doesn't line up. The murder weapon was fired twice. Boom. Are you sure you only heard one gunshot? Yes, I'm sure of that. I heard the shot and the scream. Then everything faded. I was unconscious until the rescuers came. You know, the little mice. I see. No, Your Honor, unfortunately, you don't. <laughs> Look at this. What the fuck? <laughs> Look at this file one more time. This plainly, this plainly contradicts the witness's testimony. You do enjoy tracking out that file, don't you? I don't accept this evidence unless you can tell us what page it's on! Which page contradicts Miles Edwards' testimony? Was it the summary? God damn. Fired twice, victim data. Look at the victim data in this file. It says it quite plainly. The murder weapon was fired twice. Miles Edgeworth only heard one gunshot. Yet the murder weapon was fired twice. First shot was the accidental firing when the pistol was thrown. So who fired the remaining shot? Hmm. Was there perhaps another shooter who fired that second shot? Your Honor, as I'm sure you're aware, this incident occurred 15 years ago. The evidence is dated. We didn't even know what numbers were 15 years ago. The pistol did fire twice. However, we do not know when the second shot was fired. It might have been fired the day before the incident. There is no proof that the second shot has anything to do with this incident! What? Hmm, I see, I see. You do have a point, Mr. Wright. Murder weapon was fired twice, as we have heard. One of those shots was fired by the defendant, a boy at the time. Do you have any proof that the other shot fired had something to do with- Yes! Your Honor, I think I'll be able to show you proof. Wh what? Impossible! Now, now, Mr. Von Karma, save your surprise for after you've seen the evidence. You're acting like a sus little fuck. Do you have evidence that the second firing of the pistol is related to this incident? Yes, I do. Take that! <coughs> eh, every time I do, it makes me laugh. This is a photograph of the scene of the crime 15 years ago. I can see that the victim lying there is Gregory Edgeworth. This proves the murder weapon was fired twice at the time of the incident. This photo proves it. Is Sussy Baca still cool to say? Will always be cool. Yeah? I, think so. I don't know what like meme shit to take seriously anymore. What is it? If you don't stop playing Genshin Impact, I'm telling Uncle Hank. Uh, so let me get this straight. Then let me get this gay. This photo proves two shots were fired. Where? Your Honor, please, please get a clue. Show the judge the contradiction of the photo. <coughs> it's the hole right there. Oh, thank God. As should be obvious, the it's not like fucking they pick random people. It's not like a jury where you pick a random dude off the street and he's the judge that day. Should be obvious, the contradiction is here. I see a bullet hole in the door. Your Honor, 
Gregory Edgeworth was killed by a shot from the pistol. Yet there is also a bullet hole in the elevator door. We also know that the murder weapon was fired twice. Thus, the door killed Gregory Edgeworth. Someone other than Edgeworth fired that second shot. It's got to be Von Karma, right? Otherwise, this doesn't make any sense. Unless... Fucking... Yogi... Genuinely forgot what happened. Like, everything. And he's like, oh shit, I guess I killed two people. Revenge was put on me. Right? But it doesn't make... It doesn't make sense if it was Von Karma, though. Mr. Wright, what are you driving at? It's simple, Your Honor. At the time of the incident, two shots were fired. Oh my god, one into Gregory's hut, the other went into the elevator door. Remember that the defendant lost consciousness after he sh- Yes. In conclusion, we must agree that the second shot was fired by someone else. Mr. Wright, but who? could be that someone else be who could that someone else be the murderer i knew i should have stepped in before your wild fantasies got out of hand mr wright look once more at the dl6 incident case file look closely try the case summary page case summary that's on page look how confident of a reader i am bitch <laughs> look what is written there not a single clue is found on the scene. If the pistol had indeed been fired two times, then the other bullet would have been discovered on the scene. No, it would have left the elevator. The window shot. It shot out? But then someone in the elevator would have had to... Oh my god. The other bullet would have been discovered on the scene. He does have a point. The second bullet has never been found. Why? Because the second bullet does not exist. The bullet that claimed Gregory Edgeworth's life was the one fired by his own son. That That's not true because it got stuck in his heart. Unless Edgeworth left the elevator and shot him. Someone outside the elevator shot him. What? Right? This is the truth of this matter. The whole truth. So help me. It was undoubtedly something else that made that bullet hole in the... That made the bullet hole in the door. Order. I will have order. Mr. Wright has proven one thing to us quite clearly. That the murder weapon was fired twice at the time of the incident. However, as Mr. Von Karma says, the second bullet fired was not found. It is highly unlikely that the police merely... Oh. Okay, buddy. Okay, buddy. Sure. Sure. We can move past that. Didn't they just find, like, more O.J. Simpson evidence, like, a year or two ago? Like, they just found something that was, like, mislabeled, and they're like, oh, shit. <laughs> Nothing has ever been mislabeled or mishandled in evidence ever. So, all we have is the single bullet fired. I'm afraid I have to discount the defense's claim. Tisk, tisk, tisk! I praise the judge for his wisdom in this matter. Praise him! Uh, how did this happen? I don't believe that the second bullet didn't exist. Was I wrong? If I've been wrong about this whole incident? Is it not even called the DL6 incident? What are you doing, Nick? Why aren't you raising an objection? I'm sorry, Maya. What? I... It looks like I was wrong. I'm out of available Pokemon. Nick? If the second bullet wasn't there, then all my conjectures are for nothing. No. But you said you'd do it, Nick. You said you'd get Edgeworth declared innocent. That was just... That was just flirty, horny talk at Edgeworth. I didn't mean it. I'm sorry. It's just when I saw the photograph, I thought that two shots had been fired. I was so certain of it, I thought I'd won. I thought there was another person, someone else, who fired the killing shot. But now... I was wrong to think it could be that simple. This case has stood, has stood unsolved for 15 years. Nick. Well, it seems we have finally cleared up this incident. Only one bullet was found at the scene of the crime. 
The shot was fired by Miles Edgeworth. Precisely. I would like to ask one thing of Miles Edgeworth before passing my verdict. Have you been paying attention to... What? Yes, Your Honor. Do you have any objections? No. No, I do not. I thought he was going to quiz him. Okay, I like that. So, you killed your father, though was not your intention. Yes, I did. Oh, no. He's accepted the guilt. Very well. The statue of limitation... The stat statute... Statute. Statue? Statute. Statue of limitations. The statute of limitations on the murder of Gregory Edgeworth runs out today. Therefore, I must pronounce a verdict on the defendant today, right here. Right now! Right here. Right now. Indeed. Does anyone have any objections? I've been here before. It's just like my first day in court. There are so many things I know I should be saying. But my mind's gone blank. I can't find the words. Mr. Wright. Yeah, I have an objection. Your Honor. I... I object. Tisk tisk tisk. Mr. Wright, on what grounds do you object? Hmm? Uh, oh, come on. If the bullet was found in Edgeworth's heart, then the, then there had to it, then the window could not be involved unless it was somebody else. So which is it? Nick? I, I don't know. His case is perfect. Grah! Huh? I, I recognize that cleavage anywhere. The second bullet. 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 What? What did you just say? Th nothing. A second bullet must exist. But where? The flashes are weird. Someone took it. Someone took it. Took it. Took it. Took it. <laughs> I'm trying to think. I was, I was, I was like, I recognize that cleavage anywhere. It's like, there's a second bullet. It's like... <laughs> What do these two boobs remind you of? Two bullets, maybe? <laughs> like, I couldn't think of it in time. <laughs> it seems waiting is not going to produce any answers from Mr. Wright. Wait, Your Honor. Hmm? I, uh... Th the second bullet, it, it existed. What? But we've just heard proof that it did not. No, you just heard some motherfucker talk. That ain't proof. He's old as shit. He wears a napkin as a necklace. I I realize that, Your Honor. I'm really grasping here. I, it's just someone took it from the scene of the crime. That's what happened. But who? The, the murderer. The murderer? Then tell us, just who is this murderer? Well, you're acting like a sussy baka, so I pick you, Pikachu. I'm still thinking about that one. Hmm. So the criminal took the second bullet, but why? Huh? First of all, how would they have found it? It's not easy to find a stray bullet, Mr. Wright. I would know after the disappearance of both my ex-wives. The murderer had to find... Was there some pressing need? The murderer didn't need it? Why would the murderer have... Yeah, because it just left the elevator and everyone sucks. Why would the murderer have spent the time to look for the stray bullet? I haven't got a clue. What's wrong, Mr. Wright? Uh, 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 um... Uh, the murderer had no reason to take that bullet. You don't want to admit it, but it's true! Uh, had to take it. Had to take it? The murderer? What does that mean? You're thinking too normal. Think crazy, says the ghost of my former mentor. Don't think why the bullet was taken. Taken. Think why the bullet had to be taken. Taken. Mr. Wright. Yes, Your Honor? I have no idea what I'm doing. Uh, the murderer had no intention of taking the bullet from the scene. But the murderer had to take that bullet. Had to, Mr. Wright. What do you mean? Well, for instance... For 
For instance, what? Uh, maybe the bullet hit the murderer? <laughs> what? <laughs> We're gonna use the fucking metal detector to find the fucking bullet. Now tell me, what card were you thinking of? I thought it was weird that we brought up the, the fishing rod and the, the metal detector earlier. And I'm like, oh, I guess you always had the metal detector no matter what. We're going to find the fucking bullet. Oh, my God. The bullet hit the murderer? Just, just saying, for instance. I mean, if it hit you, you would have to take it with you, wouldn't you? It's not like you could perform surgery right there. You know. Do I have evidence? No. Didn't somebody say that Von Karma took a trip after the DL6 incident for like several months? Speaking of surgery. Am I nuts? <sighs> I was just talking off the top of my head, but what if that's what really happened? I wish there was a way that I, the player, could have come up with the idea of the murderer getting shot and the bullet like being on on their person let me get this straight so at the time of the murder the murderer themselves was shot and they left with the second bullet still inside of them thus leaving only one bullet at the scene of the crime uh yes i guess that's how it would work but there's a problem with that the other two people rescued from that elevator miles edgeworth and yanni yogi were both unharmed so that would mean the murderer came from outside, yes. Well, all my criticisms are starting to kind of go away, because I'm like, that conversation with Grosberg has to mean something, because it was fucking stupid. <laughs> he was so good, he only took one vacation. I think I get it now. <laughs> like, I was like, what a useless conversation. And then, oh, wait a minute. Right? The two men fight inside the elevator. Trying to stop them, the boy picks up the pistol at his feet and throws it. The pistol discharges and the bullet... The bullet goes through the elevator door and hits the murderer outside. The boy loses consciousness. Then the murderer opens the elevator door and sees the men inside. Hmm. Mr. Wright, you are truly the most unpredictable defense attorney I've ever known. I can tell you're grasping, yet I cannot deny the possibility of what you say. I declare it here. No man can deny Phoenix Wright. What are you saying? Deny it! Deny it! No one involved in the incident was wounded! There was no murderer! Well, then that means Edgeworth is not guilty if there was no murder. Goodbye. Hmm. No one was wounded at the time of the incident. He's right. I can't think of anyone. Hey, Nick. Huh? I just thought of something really crazy. Crazy? Remember what... Hootie Hole Theory, right here. Am I a fucking genius? Gregory Edgeworth dealt a blow to his perfect trial record. Wow. It must have been quite a shock for Von Karma. He took a vac... Oh, for months. I thought he just went to go get the bullet taken out somewhere else. For months. Oh, I guess if he didn't want a record of the surgery, he'd have to like leave the country, right? 
or do some like Breaking Bad shit and go to go to Gus Fring's chicken farm. He took a vacation for several months after that. The Von Karma Hole Theory. We did it. For an unusual... Ev yes, an unusual event for the man. Wait. Never mind. I take it all back. If we have the metal detector, then the bullet's still in him. He had to wait several months for it to heal over? I was going to say, it wouldn't take several months to, like, remove a bullet, sew it up, and then stop bleeding to the point where you can wear shirts in public. Right? Unless the metal detectors were something else, and I'm stupid. That was the first and the last vacation he's taken in his many years of prosecuting. I'm glad that conversation meant something now. Right? Unless I'm stupid. That's literally like the only thing in the court record we haven't used besides here's the bullet. Yeah. He's going to be like, oh, the, 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 the bullet. Meh. But if Von Karma didn't take that vacation out of shock... But he took it because he but took it because he was injured. Which would mean can only mean one thing. He was the murderer in the DL6 incident. He was the man who shot Gregory Edgeworth. It was Von Karma. Oh man. Something wrong, Mr. Wright. You seem dazed. Uh no, Your Honor. I I just <laughs> the prophecy will come true shortly. Well, well, you have indicated the possibility that the murderer came from outside. Can you give us the name of your suspect? Uh-oh. Should I just come out and say it now? Yeah, just say it now. Your Honor, there is a suspect. One lone suspect. Well, this is certainly interesting news. Very well, Mr. Wright. Who is your suspect? V -v -v uh, my hands are shaking. My knees are weak. Von Karma! Von Karma. You mean the Von Karma? The prosecutor? The one standing right over there? You don't object? Hmm. I see no need. Why honor this ridiculous outburst with my objection? Says the man who craves being right. Now he can technically say he didn't object to it. Because you took a vacation for several months starting the day after the incident. Yet you pride yourself. Pride. Oh, man. We're sending a, sending a pride icon to jail. <laughs> Every community. You can keep them. <laughs> Yet you pride yourself on a perfect record. Why would you take such a long vacation without any reason? So you're claiming that I took a vacation to heal my injury from the incident? What, suddenly we're in a courtroom now? Fascinating. Prove it! I would have needed surgery, no? Where did I go under the knife at, Mr. Wright? Bring the doctors that operated on me. Have him testify. Have them testify. Never mind. Von Karma is out of the community in my head cannon. Eric. Nick. Let's find out who his doctor is. It's no use. Edgeworth. I know Von Karma perhaps too well. He's perfect. He wouldn't leave clues. If any man were to take him to jail, find him guilty, I'd declare that man perfect. Do you believe in love, chat? He's perfect. He wouldn't leave clues. He probably didn't undergo surgery. That would leave a doctor as a witness. Or he did it himself. Or his seven-year-old granddaughter did it. Bring that bitch in now. <laughs> this little kid. Like, angry fucking face. 
nobody's that perfect. So, so what, Nick? Did Von Karma pull the bullet out by himself? That's insane. No, he couldn't have. You can't just pull bullets out of yourself. This isn't an anime. Wait. What does that mean? Let's go? Oh my god, was I right? Are we going to use the metal detector? I said like five things, so... But... Right? Tisk tisk tisk. Well, Mr. Wright, can you produce evidence to prove that I was shot? All right, Von Karma. I'll prove it. And I'll even use evidence. I know how you like it so much. Oh my god. What? What? The evidence that yes, please, 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 please. please. Yes! 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 No one's yelling at me! Von Karma is perfect. He wouldn't risk surgery leaving an evidence trail. <coughs> that hurt my throat. So then I ask, where's that bullet now? <coughs> oh, God. Oh, my throat. I think it's unlikely that Von Karma performed surgery on himself. You. You don't mean. I do. Oh, fuck. Huh. Hold on. I want to read it. I want to read it. There is the possibility that the bullet is still inside Von Karma. Let's go. Whoo. Yeah, I've got a sixth sense for seeing when a man is being penetrated right in front of me. Let's fucking go. <laughs> Is that even possible for all these years? Well, there's one way to find out. Von Karma, I'm going to give you a list of words, and I want you to define them to the best of your abilities. Pegging. <laughs> I don't think it's in his ass, but that'd be really funny. We could use this metal detector. That I've been carrying around for no reason. That I should have returned to the police office, like, every time we've gone in. Well, Von Karma, I'm going to run this over you and see what we find. And for every time it goes off, I'm getting a kiss from Edgeworth. Fuck. Uh, I refuse. You, you refuse? But refusing this means... You acknowledge that the bullet is still inside you, penetrating you. <laughs> is this real? Order. Order. Your Honor, the defense requests that we be allowed to use the metal detector. Judge, I call for a suspension of this trial. This is an invasion of privacy. Fuck yeah, the statute of limitations runs out on this case today. It was you who said we had to end it right here, right now. Mm. Enough. I permit the use of the metal detector. Mr. Von Karma, you will submit yourself to testing. Nick, what does this mean? I don't know, but we have to give it a shot. This is fucking amazing. Let's fucking go. It reacted. Something's inside his right... Oh, his shoulder. Meh. The bullet. <coughs> okay, so Edgeworth shot Von Karma. And then Von Karma took the opportunity while everyone was unconscious to just shoot Edgeworth's dad. Mr. Von Karma... My husband is pissed. Look at that scowl. You. It was you. 
I was afraid this would happen, and so I remained silent. What? Indeed, there is a bullet in my shoulder. However, it has nothing to do with this incident. What? I was shot in the shoulder long before the DL6 incident. I claim that the bullet in my shoulder has no relation to DL6. Uh, we're gonna remove the bullet and match the ballistics, right? Fingerprints, something. Mr. Von Karma, can you prove that? Prove? I have no obligation to prove anything. It is Mr. Wright who must prove something here! That I... Uh, Mr. Wright? Well, can you prove it? Please? Like, everyone wants this dude either got, or it's like, this case is so cool that I kind of want it to be true. Can you prove that the bullet in Von Karma's shoulder was from DL6? Of course he can't. He won't have any of the DL6 evidence. That's because you took it out of the records room. Except the bullet, bitch. Science. With no proof, you cannot convict me of any crime. So sorry, Mr. Wright. No. I'm the one who's sorry, Mr. Von Karma. What? You were close. One day away from freedom. But you see, I have proof. What? What? Who would have thought you would dig your own grave trying to convict Edgeworth? I think that bullet in your shoulder to the DL6 incident. I can link that bullet in your shoulder to the DL6 incident. And here's my final proof. My attorney's badge. The bullet. Yeah, clear ballistic markings. Fuck yeah. That's game. That. A bullet? Where did you get that? This is the bullet used in the DL6 incident. This was taken from the heart of the victim, Mr. Gregory Edgeworth. And now in the name of the heart of his son, Miles Edgeworth, I convict thee. The bullet is preserved quite nicely with all the ballistic markings intact. Ballistic markings. Oh, they're gonna get a dog together, name it ballistics. Ball for short. It'll be a pug because it'll have like a short tail dog. Call it ball. You may recall the term. You may recall the term. It came up in the first trial two days ago. Ballistic markings are the fingerprints of a weapon. Weapon. All bullets fired from a gun are marked with that weapon's unique pattern. 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 By examining the markings, you can tell which weapon fired fired the bullet. 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 It's quite accurate. 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 We have two bullets in our possession. One, the bullet removed from Gregory Ed Gregory Edgeworth's heart. The other, Mr. Von Karma, is, is the other Mr. Von Karma is the bullet buried in your shoulder. We could analyze both bullets. Then, if the markings matched, we would know that both bullets had been fired from the same gun. The very same pistol, in other words. The murder weapon that killed Gregory Edgeworth. <laughs> Mr. Von Karma, you will let us remove that bullet from your shoulder. Then we'll compare the ballistic markings to those on this bullet. And solve this case once and for all. Well, Mr. Von Karma... Oh my god! Oh my god, that scream. I've heard that scream before. Wait, I know. Help, I can't breathe. Quiet, I said quiet. You're not making this any easier. Stop breathing my air! Oh, I'll, I'll stop you. Stop breathing my air. Get away. Get away from my father. Bang. I don't remember what fucking sound I made. 
it's that scream I heard in the elevator 15 years ago. I like that angle of him better. That's the defense angle. It was you who screamed. Mr. Von Karma. What? I didn't even realize he was talking. I was looking at the pictures. So it was you. Oh my god. Oh my god. You and your father are my curse! Your father shamed me with a penalty on my record! Had you, you left a scar on my shoulder that would never fade! It, oh my Jesus! I'll bury you! I'll bury you with my bare hands! Fifteen years earlier! Chief Prosecutor, I am sorry! Von Karma, it's not like you to make this kind of error. I never would have thought that Edgeworth would be the one to catch you. I... I was careless. I'm sorry, but you will have to be penalized. I've covered for you in the past, but not this time. Me! Edgeworth! It was a shock like... It was a shock like none I had ever known. Me? Penalized? It took hours for me to regain my composure. Suddenly, I found myself in the darkness. I reached out to the heartless. <laughs> Paddled my way through. I was in the court records room. I must have wandered in there without thinking where I was going. The room was pitch black. The lights must have gone out. I went out into the hall and felt my way to the elevator. I pressed the button, but nothing happened. Then... There was a noise. I was in pain. A horrible burning pain in my shoulder. Just then the lights came back on. The elevator door opened before my eyes. I saw three people inside. All lying unconscious from oxygen deprivation. Much to my surprise, a pistol lay at my feet. I knew then... It was my destiny. Merry Christmas. In his last moments, Gregory Edgeworth was still unconscious. He died, never knowing who had shot him. Later, he spoke through a medium blaming Mr. Yogi. He was fooled. It was the perfect crime. Tisk tisk. Who would have thought another man would have come to open an elevator? Who would have thought another man would have come to open that elevator door? Judge! What? What are you doing? Do your job! Bring an end to this miserable charade! Now! End it! Uh, uh, very well. It appears that we have come to a very long... We have come a very long way to the end of this maze. Fifteen years later, Mr. Miles Edgeworth. Yes, Your Honor. You were innocent. You are innocent. As you said, it was all a nightmare. Yes, Your Honor. The court finds the defendant, Mr. Miles Edgeworth, not guilty. W's and confetti, like, subscribe, share, donate, ring the bell, become a member if you haven't. We did it. We did it. That is all. This court is adjourned. Please tell me I don't have to look at front-facing... Uh, <laughs> uh, von Karma again. Nick! Nick! We did it! Did you see his face? Von Karma looked even paler than usual. He's pretending to be all cool, but inside you crushed him, Nick. Crushed. 
that was a bad idea. <coughs> I gotta say, I'm impressed. <laughs> it was pretty close, though. I was sure he'd had it. I know, I was on the verge of tears the whole time myself. But now it's all just a good memory. So it's finally over, Edgeworth. Right. Yeah? Kiss, love, affection, dinner, coffee, drinks. I... Oh my god, is it gonna happen? Maya, that that is not what he's trying to say. I know, I know, try saying thank you. I, I see. Did I just get cock-blocked by a 17-year-old spirit medium? Th thank you, right? Y you're welcome. I think you could have done better than that. Maybe some X's and O's, box of chocolates, some flowers. Saying I love you is not the worst crime. Um, sorry. I'm not good at this sort of thing. Oh, he wants to take it. The words need to be taken slow. I respect the fuck out of that. You got a lot to learn, Edgeworth. She's got you there. Ooh. Whoop! Amazing pal! You just pulled through just like I thought you would. I'll never forget this. I owe you on a pal. And tonight, let's party. Dinner's on May. Yeah, my salary went down a bit this month. But who cares? Oh, what a... Gumshoe's a good boy. See, Mr. Edgeworth? You should take a lesson from Detective Gumshoe. That's how you say thank you. Hmm, I... I see. I will buy a meal for Phoenix Wright and I to enjoy privately to say thank you. Ahem. <laughs> He tried to do a little whoop. <clears throat> whoop. I I feel foolish. Don't worry. Take it a little at a time. You'll get used to it. It's been 15 years since I've seen Edgeworth this unguarded. Oh, fuck. <laughs> hey, y'all. Lotta. Y'all were great in there. Thank you. Yo, Edgeworth, congrats! Uh, thank you, thank y'all very much. I knew you were innocent from the start, of course. Just look at you, you wouldn't stick your hand in the cookie jar if no one was there. <laughs> I'm standing here. You were the witness on the first day of the trial, weren't you? Yeah, well, let bygones be bygones, eh? <laughs> Speaking of, which, speaking of which, what are you going to do now, Lada? Ooh, me? Uh, I went back to college. I gave up trying to be an investigative photographer pretty quick. Really? That's too bad. Huh? Isn't that the hot dog guy from the park? Huh? We hooked up during the murder. It's over, Nick. My life is over. Why the sad face, Larry? What happened now? Oh, Nick, I'm not long for this world. Uh, you don't look sick. It's Kianse. She, she's gonna live in Paris. Paris, Nick. She's leaving me behind. I don't know how to use a pen. Should have seen that coming. Yo, Edgy, there you are. Uh, yes. Here I am. Congrats, Edgy. Here, a little gift for me in celebration. Celebration? That's unusual for you Harry Butts you can't you come along tonight too my tree tape pal huh uh, thanks look forward to it yo yo Nick that's the suit that questioned me when he says treat that's not police talk for prison food right right you'll never take me back never the Hootie Hole Theory was basically confirmed! But, but, uh, I, I think you'll be fine, Larry. Right. Yeah? What's up? 
that envelope that Larry gave me. It's got money in it. Well, yeah, that's not that strange. People give money away to celebrate sometimes. <sighs> what? It's $38, right? Oh, to honor the... To remember the, the lunch money that was stolen. That's really cute. Huh? What a weird amount. I mean, it's, it's not a little, but it's not a lot either. $38 exactly? We're going to use that money to go on a cute little date. We're going to walk around Ikea and pick furniture for a hypothetical home. D Nick? Wasn't that... A yeah, because he's being a nice boy. Wasn't that exactly the amount of lunch money that was stolen from Mr. Edgeworth in school? $38. No. <sighs> what the Fuck you! No! <laughs> what? I really had like, I really was sitting here and I'm like, what a sweet, precious boy. Fucking. God damn it. Larry, it was you. What are you so surprised about, right? Huh? Larry was absent that day from school, right? But that doesn't automatically rule him out as a suspect. You don't have to have been in the elevator to be the murderer. That's what we learned today. What? Think back to that day 15 years ago. Larry took the day off, but he was bored, so he came into school anyway. Then he saw the money lying there, and the rest is history. I never was good at history. Eh. That was more of a social studies guy. Edgeworth, you didn't know, did you? I suspected. I just couldn't picture Larry protecting you like he did that day. Everyone else was saying you did it. The whole class was against you, remember? Yeah, too well. Right, you may not know this, but we used to have a saying back in school. When something smells... It's usually the butts. I know, I know. Really right. I'm surprised you didn't figure it out. Well, this sure is an unexpected... T well, this sure is an unexpected turn of events, eh? Edgeworth? Mm. You should have told me. Now, now, Nick. Oh, don't you think the statute of limitations has run out, Mr. Edgeworth? I'd say so, yes. My bad. There you, there you have it. Uh, where does that leave me? I became a defense attorney because of what you two did. Well, you have well, you have always been something of an, ins an insufferable emotionalist. Just say you like me back, bitch. Yeah, you get worked up too easily too. Death, the death sentence. Oh my god! And then Phoenix Wright killed them all to death. The death sentence for both of you. Man, if only I had known, I would become I would have become a prosecutor. The same goes for me, only the other way around. <gasps> Our fates are intertwined. <laughs> oh, that would be a great twist, is if you play Miles as a defense attorney and Phoenix is the prosecutor. But I, I, I don't know. The charm of getting something wrong, I don't think it would work the other way around. For the longest time, I thought I might have killed my own father. I thought I might be a criminal. I became a prosecutor. A prosecutor. I'm tired, I'm sick, and it's my half birthday. Like, subscribe, donate, become a member. I might have just lost my monetization for this. I became a prosecutor in part to punish myself and then a prostitute to reward myself for all that prosecuting. Oh, God damn it. <laughs> oh, fuck. If I had known the truth, if I had known the truth, I might have become a defense attorney after all. Edgeworth. Want to switch, right? Or, you know, exchange spit. 
Hey, yo, line up. I'll take a photo. Hey, photo time. Let's go. And after that, dinner on MIP. This is hard. There's so many people talking right now. Uh, Detective Gumshoe took us out on the town that night. He celebrated Edgeworth's newfound freedom. Even though Edgeworth himself was still in detention. Oh, damn. Really? Also, I guess I could have put free... Eh, I still stand by Edgeworth X Justice instead of... Uh, Edgeworth X Freedom or Free Edgeworth. Even though Edgeworth himself was still in detention. Why are we still in detention? Does he not get to leave? Whoa. I went a little overboard yesterday. My head... Man, the last time we saw the office like this, Mia got murdered. My head hurts. Huh? It's still only 5 o'clock. Well, it's 5 o'clock somewhere. It's weird that he's dead. Yeah. Nibbling on sponge cake. <laughs> it's only 5 o'clock. Maybe I should go back to sleep. Huh? What's this? A letter? Oh, no! Good morning, Nick. You were really impressive yesterday. Seeing you, it made me think about what I'm doing here. I'm a spirit medium in training, of course. I wanted to help Mr. Edgeworth, too. I wanted to help you. But I couldn't. I was useless. So I've decided to go back to my training. I'll become a full-fledged spirit medium for starters. I, I couldn't say it to your face, so I left this letter. Goodbye, Nick. What? Goodbye? What time is it? Ah, the first trains for the mountains have already left to the station. The first trains have already left. To the station. I guess I'm too late. What? I was going to say. We say goodbye. Hey. N Nick. Maya. So, you're leaving? Yeah. It's hard being a spirit medium who can't talk to spirits. And... I think you'll do fine without me, Nick. Be good, okay? Wait! What? I never could have saved Edgeworth without your help. Huh? On the last day of the trial, I heard her. I heard Mia's- Oh, yeah! That would probably make her feel, I hope, better. You heard my sister? You're a better spirit medium than me. Yeah, only her voice, but still. It was at the very end when I thought we'd lost everything. Well, that's my sister for you. Detective Gumshoe helped, and Mr. Grosberg, and even Larry. I'm the only one who couldn't help. I was useless, Nick. But you were the one who stopped Von Karma, Maya. Huh? Like... I didn't do anything. All I did was wander around in a daze. Sorry, but I have evidence that you helped. Oh, fuck. What do I do? What do I do? Evidence? It's the bullet, right? I just want to make sure I get this right. It's the bullet? It is the bullet. Okay, I just wanted to make sure. I'm like, if I don't get a second chance at this, I'm going to be really pissed. Okay, sick. Thank you. I earned it. I fucking, I fucking basically kind of mostly got so many things right. I earned, I, I earned a little help so I can get a positive ending. A bullet? Von Karma was, 
I still have this and haven't turned it into authorities. When Von Karma was convinced he had taken all the evidence pertaining to DL6, but you were the one who rescued the last piece of evidence we needed. This was the bullet that put an end to Von Karma. Would I have gotten another chance at that, or is it like a... Oh, now you got the sad ending. This was the bullet that put an end to Von Karma, and you were the one who gave it to me. Nick. Thanks, Maya. I couldn't have done it without you. I'll be back soon. Huh? I'm going to complete my training and come back. Uh, okay. I'll be waiting. Of course you will. You can't run the office by yourself. You're hopeless. Uh, I don't know about that. Lord? So, this is it. See you soon. See you soon, Maya. Oh. Thanks, Nick. I mean, she comes back, right? There's two other games. We have to hang out in one of them. Right? Just come back for Phoenix Wright Ace Attorney 2. Two Attorney, Two Furious. And so my story ends. Time to turn a new page. And say goodbye to the novice defense attorney that I once was. Now a new story begins. With the same old crazy cast of characters. Ah! <laughs> Don't think you've graduated yet, amateur. Mr. Wright, perhaps you'd like to rethink that claim. Uh, yes, Your Honor. Uh oh, I got a bad feeling about this. Don't ruin my perfect record, sir. Oh, is that it? Hey, pal, Mr. Edgeworth came down to the pressing to wish me a happy new year. Talk about a pleasant surprise. Whoop. Detective Gumshoe. Then he hung his head low and went back. Oh. Kind of like he was Emberist or something. Strange, huh? God damn it. I need to read these fast enough. Huh? Nick? Nah, haven't seen him lately. Who, me? I've been working at a cheese shop. That Missy's a nice lady, but she can't exactly what you call a cheap date. What? No, oh, she's in Hawaii right now. Yeah. What? Oh, he's just dating another model. Oh, this sweaty fuck. Oh, right? Yeah, I remember him. Uh, he's, been busy. he's been busy lately, you know? Not to ring my own bell, but I sort of taught him everything he knows. <coughs> I'm sure he's grateful. I guess it's not untrue. He's the tutorial. Uh, Phoenix Wright, mm, the defense attorney from whom I wrote the affidavit for, yes. Oh, you should know. I've taken over management of the Gatewater Hotel. Should you be in the area, please stop by. Are, is this the point of view of Maya trying to find Phoenix again? Or is this just nothing for fun? Ahem. Oh, it's you. Phoenix, right? Ah, uh, yes. Mia's understudy, was he not? I understand how he... I wonder how he's doing. I haven't seen him of late. Ah, uh, the days of my youth. Like the scent of fresh lemon, you see. Yeah, it wouldn't be the player, because you're Phoenix Wright. Uh, Phoenix Wright? Is he an actor? Well, I'm not buying it. You can't be a star with a name like Phoenix. Did you know that they're... Okay, not that I want a DVD. Everything these days, how am I supposed to... I'm pleased to announce the Pink Princess is a hit. I sure owe that Mr. Wright a great deal. Oh, and I'm keeping my face out of the public till the show's over. I wouldn't want to ruin any kids' dreams, you know. 
Does he still think he's ugly? What? Oh, I got a letter from Maya the other day. Sounds like she caught a cold standing under a waterfall. I wanted to visit, but didn't have time, so I sent her some big princess cards. She says she can't buy them where she is. What kind of place does she live in? Anyway. <clears throat> it's really challenging to blow your nose with a scepter ring. Right? Oh, who's that? Who you want to talk? Let's talk Pink Princess, all right? But, you know, I snuck into the studio the other day. And I saw her. The one inside the Pink Princess suit. <clears throat> what a dog. It was kind of a shock for a boy of my tender age. Damn. What? Yeah, I remember right, huh? Me? I'm in training to become a paranormal photographer. You know, that picture I took of everyone? Well, just behind them, there's- Oh, fuck you. That's perfect. For real, now that's talent. I'm gonna be famous. I'm walking here. Show me the- Okay. Right? It, there's a ghost in the picture. Because it's Mia. Yay! Oh, I love it. <laughs> well, <laughs> Detective Gumshoe brings the confetti. Cannon. Hello? A brand new episode has been added. Okay. <sighs> oh, man. Well, holy shit, there we go. Ugh. God, my shoulders. Well, thank you for bearing with me while I've been pretty congested and trying to do all the fun voices and not cough up a lung. Huh. I really liked that. It ev Again, it was like everything where I was like, why are we having these weird conversations? They all came back. Um, that was really nice. Um, not that I like doubted it, but like I was like, how what what is the point of like the older case sliding in to this one? And it they did it really seamlessly and I don't know. I I really like the sentiment behind it. Again, it's like, you know, kind of a a ghost of Edgeworth's past with uh Von Karma, obviously, but also there's there's an element there too of um like Phoenix even said it like uh, he was one one decision tree away from also wanting to be a prosecutor and it's like this is who both of them should aspire to obviously not be um and I like I like how personal it became um cuz that was it's I mean I think in a perfect world from gauging from the fact that there's a fifth case in the first uh, game in the trilogy collection, I think that was originally the hope is there's two, two random cases in the middle because the tutorials, the tutorial, the first case is how do we get rid of our tutorial boss mentor figure with Mia? And then there's like one case where like, we're not personally attached to it. And then it's, my boyfriend slash love interest is being convicted of murder. He's been accused of murder. What are we going to do? Um, but I, I liked doing the one, the samurai case because we weren't involved. Um, and I, I, I want some more of, th I would want some more of that. And I'm assuming that's what we would get in the later games. Um, it's just like, it's cool that it was like, more story involved and stuff. It was cool that it involved like more characters. It just made me realize when Edgeworth was like doing the pointing animation from the confession stand, I was like, 
I miss Edgeworth being my prosecuting attorney. I'm tired of Von Karma. He's gross. And I don't like him anymore. <laughs> He's mean. Um, but this was, it's a lot of fun. Like it's, there's just enough there to like, you know, it was cool when it would spark my imagination to think more outside the box, but I like how everything is like, sure, random and silly in like the nitty gritty, but like, there's still enough seriousness to take there to where it's not like, oh, like, you know, uh, I'm trying to think of a good example. Uh, a poison dart frog just happened to land in their cereal that morning and 10 hours later, like, they died. This wasn't a murder. Like, there's still enough to keep you, like, invested, keep you guessing, um, but it's also just wild and weird enough to where it's like, having some interesting uh theories or thoughts um i really like that and i don't know they're fun um the minus obviously the dialogue between edgeworth and phoenix it gets significantly less like sexual after the first case because i i was sitting there and i'm like why was the beginning of this like so fucking like like blush inducing for me and i'm like oh yeah like we stopped like having like the overtly sexual like poses characters and images but also maya mia didn't happen again in the final case so i don't know i want to comment on it because i think that stuff is like fun when done right and minus just the concept of my late 20s boss in sharing a, a body with her 17 year old little sister minus that that's like the perfect blend of like fun for me and i want to say thank you to everyone who had that fun with me because i do remember because i i check the streams after they're done to make sure like oh the audio is good and stuff like that i don't watch them all but like i'll kind of go through it and kind of watch some clips and make sure everything's timed out and i'm like i really like let go and kind of embrace that. And I appreciate everyone who encourages me to, to be more comfortable doing that. Um, so thank you while also getting to still feel confident in voicing my, why, why did the 17 year old's body get inhabited by a ghost? <laughs> like Those moments and stuff. Um, but I had a lot of fun um like feeling that energy but then also like commenting on that energy like that this is something i really appreciate you know i feel like me in middle school i i would have been too embarrassed and been like no like they're not flirting they're just buddies like like no i don't i don't see it that way you know what i mean like not wanting to not wanting to start a conversation or stir the pot so to speak so it's it's nice getting to getting to just enjoy and embrace it and not feel like someone's about to turn around and go um well actually this book i read says this stupid thing that's been misinterpreted for thousands of years and i'm going to use it as a plot point for our actual life like that's how society should go blah like i don't have to worry about that shit here as much so thank you um, and, uh, oh my God. Uh, Edgeworth is not in the mood when going through drama. Um, yeah, yeah. Go eat. I'm glad. Oh, my shoulders. I mean, I've talked about the games I'm going to play a couple of times um assuming i don't I, assuming whatever bug i've got goes away by thursday thursday will start um inscription and that'll be the start of spooky season and then i want to play um lies of p which is the bloodborne pinocchio timothy chalamet game um it just looks cool and i i really badly want to play it on the channel um when it comes out um, and after that, I don't know. Um, 
I, I, I put up a, a message, uh, for the channel members to help me pick some games. Um, I might put up another one or something. Cause like the, the deals also changed on the PlayStation store, which is annoying. Um, I don't know. Um, consider becoming a member. Um, not only does it help support the content, but you get to be a part of those conversations and stuff. Um, still on a budget and all that, but the more members we get, the bigger that budget can go. Huh? Um, but yeah, I, I put that in the, the members like community tab thing, um, with some of the games I'm kind of looking at. Um, I'll probably update that, uh, shortly just to get like a better feel for, everyone's thoughts it's hard with video games because it's like you know unless it's like a big title thing i might go hey i heard of this this might be cool and everyone's like what's that i'm sure it's cool um but uh oh spooky season is now don't let the don't let the the gingerbread christmas lights snow people talk you into burr months Stop listening to fucking All I Want for Christmas is You. Even Mariah Carey said not yet, which she's already crossed a line by, like, inciting Halloween violence on November 1st. Spooky season is from September 1st at least to, like, Veterans Day. So, like, mid-November. Minimum. Like, holy shit. Like, you're already ruining, like, Pride Month with everyone's bullshit, like you need to let, let everyone have the fall. I don't want to feel the fucking Christmas season start in September because it ends with burr tee fuck off. Stop invading the calendar. Anyway, she's defrosting. No, she's fucking not. Mariah Carey even said, stop it. And she fucking November, November 1st at midnight is too fucking soon. Anyway, spooky season starts. It was supposed to start September 1st, but I wanted to play through all of Phoenix, right? Spooky season starts Thursday, unless I'm sick. Then it'll be next Monday. Don't let the... No, like, the, the ginger... I was trying to make, like, winter things, right? <laughs> don't let the... No, gingerbread. <laughs> also, I don't think Mariah Carey is ginger. <laughs> I'm used to the bullying. Oh, no. <laughs> I'm sorry. Um, no, 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 no. I meant I meant the winter things. Um, oh, thank you. Yeah. Hopefully it's just a little thing. Like I said, I took a test and it wasn't the big thing. Um, but I'll probably have to take another one tomorrow if I don't feel any better just to see if that changes. Um, but yeah, I'm just staying hydrated and minus this stream like i've been resting my voice and being careful hoping it goes away soon because i got a stream on thursday and more adventure time to talk about as well as all the other videos i'm still trying to make right now um oh, it's super weird i forgot that these dates aren't right um anyway thank you so much for watching guys i want to give a big thank you to everyone watching hanging out alana for modding uh my channel members for telling me to play phoenix right and like encouraging this series to happen that's super kind again remember to click all the things if you want more phoenix right streams in the future i want to give a big thank you to everyone who donates and all the channel members um and for the people who donated on this stream a big big thank you thank you Haley for the nine kinder s for the 15 australian Haley for the two come for the two owie for the 20 chf uh, the Franks, the Swiss Franks, um, unwinning for the two and Juliana Rivas for the 279 California or Canadian. Sorry, that's joke is stupid. Um, but yeah, we'll be doing spooky season and then, um, who knows? Um, I'll take a look at what we want to do after that, but maybe we'll do if these get a lot of likes and, uh, comments and shares and the numbers are solid and everything and people seem into it uh, maybe we'll do a second phoenix right game before the year concludes slash january depending on what i do 
when the holidays actually hit. Um, but um, I want to say thank you to everyone who watched. Thank you to everyone who's clicking. Thank you so much again to everyone who donates. Thank you again to the channel members. Again, consider becoming one today if you want to be part of helping me pick games. Um, like I said, this was one where I was like, would anyone care if I played this? And a bunch of people went, yes. And I'm like, okay, cool. That was pretty easy. Let's go. Um, but next we're going to do inscription and spooky season has started. Um, if you got any, uh, we'll say scary horror games, but also just like, you know, suspenseful fall vibes, any sort of thing that would fit this time of year. Um, I don't know. Let me know. Um, cause here and on the main channel, like the fall isn't really my busiest time, even when I'm constantly consistent every week. Um, but I love, I love the fall. I love horror. I love being scared. I love creepy things, eerie things, um, ghosts and the like. So I always try to make something extra and fun during this time of year. And it's also, um, associated with a lot of pain recently too. So it's, I think part of it is me going like, no, Halloween is still going to be fun. Damn it. Like I need that. Um, but, uh, I don't know. If you got ideas, let me know. Um, like I said, I shared a, a list of horror games with the, the members tab, so be sure to check that if you're a member. Or join if you want to check it and help me pick some games. Um, and, uh, yeah. Thank you so much for hanging out. Thank you so much for clicking. Again, keep supporting the streams and the channels. Um, especially if you want more Phoenix Wright, let me know in the comments. Like and share in donating dropping a super thanks if you're watching this is a vod that's a big way to do it too or at the third build.com um because i would really be down to play another phoenix right they're lengthy um or maybe if this becomes a bigger uh series uh maybe doing that extra case over the holidays would be kind of cool in the winter i don't know or something um but let me know let me know. Vote with your vote. Vote with your eyeballs. Vote with your with the voice of the clicks. Um, but thank you again, everyone who donated. Thank you again to the channel members. Thank you again, everyone who's hanging out. I had a lot of fun. I'm sorry I'm cutting the let's talk about the game part short. I'm my head is very dizzy. My water bottle is empty. My voice is a little gravelly. Um, but I I really did enjoy this. Um, I don't know. They're fun. They're interesting. I like picking apart the mystery. I enjoyed the game a lot more once they stopped telling me who the murderer was. Um, but I don't know. I like I like the character interactions. I love how lived in the world feels. Um, and I don't know. That definitely left me in a place where I'm like, I really want to know that like Maya is okay. And like, you know, what what does Phoenix and Edgeworth's relationship look like? you know, with this bond now becoming closer and, you know, will a perfect record ever matter to Phoenix Wright, you know, or something. But I had a lot of fun. Um, <coughs> excuse me. I'm going to get some water and I'm going to get some rest. My nose is plugged. Um, but I don't know. I had a lot of fun. I hope you guys did too. Um, Oh, the trials get longer. Yeah, I I definitely like breaking them up. It also just depends. Because this one, I was like, well, let's keep going. I'm having fun. Um, so, I don't know. It depends. I definitely don't want the goal to be one case per stream. I'm glad we let that go. Um, again, prove it. Show up for part one and part two to reassure me that Phoenix Wright cases don't have to all be a one big old stream. I don't know. Um, but, yeah. Uh, let me know in the comments if you want more. Uh, thank you again to everyone who donated. Thank you again to my members. Um, thanks for hanging out, everybody. Make sure you're clicking the stuff. Follow me on social media. Everywhere at the third bill. Blah, blah, blah. You know the drill. Click on things if you want more things. Try something new with me. I just did um, Adventure Time with Fiona and Cake, the first two episodes. And then I'll be doing, obviously, the rest of the show as it drops on the main channel while I'm working on uh, Star vs. Uh, my Adventures with Superman and some other things. I, I might start getting back into some music soon 
Um, especially with the fall coming up, I might enter an era, depending if I have the time and the bandwidth. Um, um, but it's also the spooky time of year. I want to check out like some scary things, especially the animation. That'd be cool. Coraline and the like. Um, let me know. Click on stuff. Uh, drink some water, guys. Just like always, don't forget that there's a link in the card. Uh, there's, there's a card linked to the description uh, for social awareness, education, mental health, crisis lines, Trevor Project resources, things like that. Should you or someone you know need them? Um, yeah, I'll definitely be working on feeling better soon. Um, yeah, drink some water, guys. I uh, hope everyone enjoyed the stream. Hope to see you next time I upload or go live. Um, hope everyone's staying safe. Hey, Aisley Graves, thank you for becoming a member. I'm sorry that was right at the last second, but thank you. Holy crap. Welcome. Go to the community tab and you'll see the members only posts. Join the conversations about games we're playing. But thank you, Aisley. I hope I said your name right. Um, thank you so much for becoming a member. That really does help pay for games, pay off equipment, and help Bill with his bills. Um, oh, God. I just got home from work. Well, I hope you enjoy the stream. I, I am a little under the weather, so I'm sorry that my voice is a little meh, but I feel like it went fine. Let me know what you think of the stream, Aisley. Thank you again for becoming a member. Thank you, everyone, for hanging out. Thank you, Alana, for modding. Um, I'm going to go get some rest and take care of myself. Um, be safe. Be mindful of others. Wear a mask if you choose to go out. And remember to take care of yourselves, please.